He threw me off a balcony flat. What? What? He dangled me off it and dropped me off it. The beatings could go on for hours throughout the day. And then you've got um, the assaults throughout the day and stuff like that. You're trying to think, how can I get out of this situation? No, I've just accepted the situation. Oh my God. You thought he was 21? He was 39. Wow. Yeah, and I was 15 when I met him. Just remember feeling bang, and I woke up un like I'd been knocked out unconscious. And he was stamping all over my stomach, and then he was dragging me out into the communal hallway, like stamping and kicking out of my You lost the yeah, baby? Yeah. My dad always gave me 50p, and he used to say, just keep it in your pocket if you ever need me to go to the phone box. And I ran to the phone box. Sorry. That's all right. <clears throat> Tough man. And I rang my dad and I said, I'm ready to come home now. And I went home, but then I didn't, still didn't cut, I still couldn't cut loose from cut it. Cut the cord, yeah. <clears throat> he decided to <laughs> me. And that was when I, I never stepped foot back in there again. That was it, it was game over. Mm -hmm. People do not do them sort of things to another human being, let alone a child. No. I just felt bang. So I've looked and I've seen this, these blue eyes. And I remember saying, no, this is not happening to me again. Whipping my top and went, it's not about the money, it's about teaching little like you, they can't walk the street with men like me. I passed out and what I didn't all the time, chloroform over, you know, my mouth. And I just remember thinking, oh, I want to go to sleep, I want to go to sleep. But then thinking, you go to sleep, you know what, you know, you know what's going to happen. You've been there before, you, you're not even over it. You're not going to get over this one. Throwing me in the bushes and going to take his pants down and get in the back of my head, like, you know, trying to force me down. I wasn't powerful enough and by the grace of God, whatever you want to call it, this car's tried to come up the road and the headlights have gone beam right on us. Marvin taught me how to box and as he's turned, I've just gone, punched him and like legged it. And I, I didn't know at the time, I was head to toe in. I thought it was sweat dripping off me and it wasn't, it was blood and it was pouring because my, my eye socket was broke, the majority of I was fractured, my nose was broke, and I just let off this harrowing scream. All the um, blood vessels got popped, you know, in my eye. So I get I get pain in my eye to this day where- Smash the face in there. feel like I need to get a That's what it is, isn't it? It's spoon and scoop my eye out and scratch it or something to get rid of the yeah, pain behind my eye. So many of you have seen Lee Marvin Hitchman part one, absolutely mind blowing stories. And in the last 30 minutes, he talked about how he met Kira. And it is just a, a completely insane story. Like all of the stories are insane. But Kira herself has got so many more stories of what she has experienced personally. Obviously, you know, the stories merge together. So Kira is going to tell us her story today. So huge thank you. Welcome. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so where did it all begin for you then, Kira? Where do you want me to begin? <laughs> <laughs> How did your parents meet? Um, they met, they, we're from Dunleary in Dublin originally. So Dublin? Yeah. I moved over here when I was three. Um, they met quite Three's young. Three's the magic number, by the way. <laughs> Sorry, it's just my date of birth. <laughs> Um, yeah, they met quite young. They was like childhood sweethearts and they stayed over there and we had my older sister, my older brother, then me and then we moved to England. My dad was a charlerman, so we trialled the world. And then we moved, in, moved to Manchester. So it was Manchester right away? Yeah, for some bizarre reason. <laughs> <laughs> what was your earliest memories then? Um, I was a quiet child, so... I, obviously, we had siblings, so I remember growing up with my siblings and 
you know, sibling things. Life at home wasn't always easier. My mum and dad had personal issues. So sometimes it could be volatile at home and upsetting and stuff like that. Your brother got cancer, didn't he? Yeah, my little brother got cancer when he was eight. He got throat cancer and that's when life really changed. With yeah. throughout the family, because at the same time, my granddad, my, my mum's dad, he was dying of skin cancer and she was really close to him. And then um, my little brother had a sore throat and I came home from school and there was an ambulance there. And what had happened, my dad was there, sorry, what had happened is my mum had took my little brother to the doctors and like they open your throat up there to check your throat and there was a tumour right there. If we would have been left another 24 hours, he would have died. So he was eight and he spent the best part of two years in hospital. Wow. Recovering from the throat cancer. And how did that affect the family? Oh, it affected us massively. My mum and dad, my mum lived at the hospital. Right? She, she lived there. My dad, obviously, he was still working, trying to come home and look after us. Like my older sister, she was in charge. I was 13 at the time, so she was 18, so she was like legal to look after us. But you, then you just start rebelling, don't you? Because like your parents out there, you, you don't understand. Even though he's poorer, like you think, oh God, he's got more to herself. And, but then in the six weeks holidays of school, we'd stay there with my little brother because they had a family quarters there. So then we would live at the hospital throughout the school holidays. I was going to ask how it affected your school life. Oh, it affected my school life massively. Like, I was bullied in sc primary school. I was bullied in high school, so that on top of it, just I just turned into a rebel. An absolute rebel. I, I hated school. Why were you bullied? I don't know. I just was the girl that got bullied. Where I went, I was, I was, I was, yeah, I was bullied in school. So I used to wag school and sit on the park near my house and hide at the back and then come home when it was school time. Um, yeah. Like, writ, writ down a fake number for my mum so they couldn't contact my mum until, like, the wagging officer started coming to the door saying, oh, she's not been in school. And I'd be like, the lion have been in school, she's just not seen me. <laughs> so, yeah. Who were your mates back then? I had one close friend called Catherine. I'm so close to her today. Today, shout out Catherine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> shout out Catherine. She lived in Moss Side, so even though I was from Clayton, I never chilled in Clayton. Moss, I chilled down like Moss Side, Hume ways. Like, my dad wasn't happy with it because, like, you know, boys, gangbangers, all the rest of it. So me and my dad used to squabble about it because my sister, she, I don't speak to my sister, don't get on with her. She was, she used to chill down there, but like she used to like, be with one gang wanger to the next gang wanger, like, do you know what I mean? So, me, like, she really rebelled against my dad and my dad just didn't, you know, want me going down the same route. But unfortunately for my dad, the more that he pushed me, the worse that it became. If he did just give me that little bit of me being off my leash kind of thing, then, but he just kind of pushed me more to wanting to be on the streets. What's the uh, first spout of trouble you got into then? Well, I was always fighting at school. Like, I got to about year eight and I was about 14 and that was it, I just snapped back. Like, if you want to hit me, I'm going to just take you all on. So school said that I could come in from nine and then I had to go home at 11 o'clock. And I said, I'm not going in for two hours. They put me in a special school, like Marvin said he went to. I loved it. Like, I used to go get your nails done and everything if you'd <laughs> just been good for one day. You'll go go cat him. What? Yeah, I loved it. I didn't miss a day of that school. Then. <laughs> didn't miss a day of that school. Then. And then they sent me back to do my GCSEs, but unfortunately I got thrown out for talking. So. You see, you didn't do them now. Yeah, I ended up completing them. I had to do them. I oh, had to good. go back to the youth centre and have like a special person off the, the school board to see me sit them. So I did actually sit them. Yeah. Oh, well done. <laughs> <laughs> Were you into sports or anything? No, I wasn't really into sports now. No, well, not really. Was, yeah. I was, not a Man United fan. Oh, yeah, I'm a United fan. <laughs> You've got to be a United fan in my house. My dad was a hardcore one. He's a City fan, but my little boy's in a United fan. <laughs> Is he? Oh, yes, yeah, oh. he's got a kid. He's, and everything. he's a United fan. Yeah. yeah so I don't he, want him to be. I'd rather him to be City. Yeah, but he's not got a choice in that. So, yeah, we, we did, like, sports. My mum used to play darts, so we used to go and watch her play darts and stuff. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Did you have like a plan when you finished school, what you're going to do with your life? Yeah, I wanted yeah. to be an air hoster. So did I. Did I got you? an A star. <laughs> yeah. I got an A star to go and 
go to college. I like to so only go mm. great that I got in travel and tourism. I wanted to. Yeah, I wanted mm-hmm. well, to be a trolley dolly. It's the yeah, hair back. Yeah, she wanted to do it. Yeah, well. trolley dolly. Yeah, and like, you two were just a day apart in yeah. birthdays yeah. as well. Because yeah. <laughs> my dad was a traveller man. I wanted to see, you know what he'd say, he used to always say, yeah. don't settle down, put a bag on your back and just go and see the world. And that was my plan. <laughs> but it didn't work out like that. No. Yeah, things come in the way, didn't they? Yeah. So where did that start? 15, by then I was I was well off the rails. I was doing little bits of shoplifting, selling the clothes in school. Like the, the lads in school would play football and put the blazers on the goalposts and I'd be going around taking the money out of the blazers and stuff like that. Obviously then till I got kicked out of school and then when I was 15, I was in my school uniform with my friend Catherine in Hume because like I said, I used to knock about down there. Um, Just by chance, I bumped into this guy called Mark. Um, Obviously he knew how old I was because he had my school uniform on. Got chatting, he said he was 21. It was actually, his flat was just across the road. He was like, oh, you should, you know, come and hang about, hang around sometime. And, you know, because I didn't have many friends. Like, I had people that I'd knock about with, but not a lot of classes of my friends. And I just, I kind of felt like an alien in the world, you know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of issues going on at home. And you're kind of left to your own devices. Like, no, obviously, I didn't feel like anybody understood me. And the more, like, they tried to understand me, like the weirder I felt kind of thing. So when I met him, it was like exciting and like, oh, he's a, he's a grown up. And I'm, cause in my head, I've always been, I think just cause obviously like with my little brother and cancer and you have to grow up quicker. Like I didn't have you, you know, we didn't have our average childhood. So I always felt years ahead of my age. So to me, I was like, oh, I'm so grown up. And then I met him and that's when my plans for the future, they just disappeared forever. It was just, from that moment, it was never gonna happen. I was never gonna be an air hostess and I was never gonna live your bog standard nine to five life. Was he charming in the beginning? Oh yeah, he was very charming in the beginning. Really charming. Was he like buying your booze and? No, I didn't, no, I didn't, I didn't. I used to drink at like 14, but I wasn't, I, I, you know, like some people really drink when they've. It did used to buy me a drink, but like we used to just sit and chat and like get a takeaway and stuff like that. You know, stuff like that. I used to think he was funny, you know, tell me funny stories and stuff like that. Obviously, I didn't know that's all part of the grooming process, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And you know, eventually that's what happened. A couple of weeks in, I can't even remember what I said to him. I probably didn't even say anything. I just know that I woke up on the kitchen floor because I've been punched, not clean out, like I've got a scar on my lip. And then I'm still having to go home, but I'm saying to mum, because my mum and dad knew that I was a scrapper. Oh, I've been in a fight. And they'd be like, right, well, you're not going back down there no more. And then like I'd run away and like, then he'd give me, because obviously he knew I lived with my parents, give me bruises to wear, like my parents, you know, wouldn't be able to see it kind of thing. And he was just doing that all all the time. I was staying out over at his flat because he was saying like, don't go home to your parents. Like they've obviously got no time for you. They don't like you and stuff like that. And you just, you kind of just, you, you believe it. You become, you become so inv- invested. I become so invested, should I say, in him that I just, if he'd have told me the sky was green, I would have believed him. Kind so, of thing. So, for what reason did the violence usually occur? It could be for nothing. Um, one day we was in the supermarket and he was walking in front of me, and I've not been looking where I'm going, and I bumped, oh, bumped into his back, and in the middle of the supermarket, he smacked me for it. So it could be over nothing. Maybe I give him a funny look that he didn't like. He was just looking for any excuse. Yeah, maybe I breathed too loudly for him. It would just be any excuse. When he was hitting you, would he yell things at you as well? Yeah. Can you give us an example? Yeah, just kind of like worthless. Call, call me a slag, call me fat, say no one wanted me. He was the only person that wanted me and that you, you're mine, you're always going to be mine. Especially at 15. Mm-hmm. Mm. People telling you you're worthless, you piece of shit, slag, whatever. And I've heard that all through school, so mm. to me it was just like, 
he's, he's right. So, yeah, stuff like that. You say stuff like that to me. Did it increase then the violence and get worse? Absolutely, yeah. It, it, become, it wasn't a slap. It was being stabbed in my leg. What? Having, yeah, he stabbed me with... Could you take us through that? Yeah, it's, um, I was still living at home at the time. Um, and I was at his flat and he was messing about and he was pulling my hair. Then he was going to cut my hair off. And I was getting lippy with him. And I knew I shouldn't have been getting lippy with him. And he'd threw the mirror on the floor. And I said, I'm going, because, you know, like, I knew what was coming next. So he just picked up the, the mirror and just stabbed me through my knee with it. And then he actually did cut my hair off. What? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he did. He got took, like, a piece off there and, like, just cut, like, a clump. So, like, not even where you could blend it in. So you'd have the little Like, the crown bits. bit. Yeah, little yeah. spiky bits, yeah, there. Yeah, yeah oh, there. Man. Um, he threw me off a balcony flat. What? What? We was, his, there was a flat there and then his flat was there. He dangled me off it and dropped me off it. And I don't even know how I didn't have a broken bone. I, I sprained think, my foot. What led up to him throwing you off the balcony? He was cracked up one day and he used to just go into these rants and, like, I'd cop for it, like... Do you know, like, if you didn't have money for crack? Because he used to say, like, um, well, if you're staying here, you should go out and make money for me. And, you know, other girls do it for their boyfriends and stuff like that. And then I was, I was trying just... Trying to get on the game. Yeah, you? trying to get me to be a prostitute. And then it, w it wouldn't... It, it wouldn't wear regards to my parents because they'd had enough of my lying. They'd had enough of me you know, running away to his house. By this time, that they, they knew something was going on. The police, like the neighbours would call the police and the police would bring me home. Um, mm -hmm. And... That yardy they, mark saved you, didn't he? Yeah, they gave me an ultimatum, basically, my parents. It's him or us. Obviously, they didn't know what I was going through, so I, I, I would never blame them for it. And I just remember saying, OK, then... Um, Packing up, I've put everything that I owned in a black bag and met him in Manchester City Centre and he was like the cat that got the cream. Because then I wasn't allowed out. I wasn't allowed to do things. I wasn't allowed a mobile. Yeah, I had to be with him. And then that's when I seen the real Mac, the one that he'd been trying to hide so desperately. So then you wouldn't just get smacked. I wouldn't just get smacked once a day. You know, you could go... The beatings could go on for hours throughout the day. And then you've got um, the sexual assaults throughout the day and stuff like that. Because was it a consensual sexual relationship to begin with? Yeah. Well, then... the police say it's not because I was 15. Oh, yeah, well, obviously course, that's yeah. statutory. Right? Yeah. Did you think, no, was he kind of forcing it on you as yeah, well? Yeah, he did. He, mm. from, the, from the first minute he did, like, made me, told me that that's what I needed to do. Like, he had, like, um, a machete in his bedroom and he used to, like, swing it about and stuff like that. So, to me, it was easy to just do what he said, just like the bullies in school, and get it over quicker with and then I'll be all right. Was he your first sexual experience? No. No? No. But he was obviously very intimidating. Yeah. I'd, I've, I'd only had um, two sexual experiences before that. Yeah. And they wasn't even really, like, they were just... The yeah, 15. Yeah. 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 So as this is getting worse and worse, then are you trying to think, how can I get out of this situation? No, I've just accepted the situation. Oh my God. I just accepted He's drilled it into you so sad. Yeah, I just accepted yeah. the situation to so to, to what it was. Like then I found out he was smoking crack. He was sleeping with prostitutes. He had a girlfriend in Liverpool. Um yeah, I just accepted the situation. Um, but then when he started smoking crack, he had um, a crack dealer that used to live in the flat as well. And, like, he used to look out for me. Like, you say, like, you, sh you know, you shouldn't be with him and stuff. Um, and But obviously he was giving Mark the crack that, you know, was sending him off his head. Mm -hmm. And, like, he grabbed me by my hair and tried to make me smoke crack off the crack pipe. And I just do always knew, like, my dad had told me about drugs and stuff like his sister in Ireland she was a heroin addict so he always like drums it into me you know about drugs and like that there was dirty so I just let him beat me out or you know do whatever he wanted to me he'd 
it, it infuriated him. That's when the beatings got worse. That I just wouldn't take the drugs because I knew that if I took drugs, then he could then make me into a be a prostitute. And he, he he'd done that to other schoolgirls. He'd groomed had he? Well, when it all come out and we did um, we I worked with the police. He actually used to pick up girls from care homes in Withenshire. Mm. He'd hang about the care homes in Withenshire for the vulnerable for the vulnerable girls. Some girls as young as 13, mm. 12, 13, that he'd be waiting for. Obviously, he used to rape them, beat them up, you know. A couple of them never went back to the care home, but then was never seen at his again after the police investigation. So, you know, we can make that is what you think it would have happened. I mean, we haven't got to the point of you saying you thought he was 21 when you met him, yeah. but actually discovering... I didn't even know his real name when I met him. No. He told me he was called, wait for it, Marvin. No. Yeah. He told me he was called Marvin. The time when I found out his real name is when the police first arrested him for assaulting me. Yeah, and so I was like, who's Mark? Like, he's not called Mark, he's called Marvin. Yeah. He was like, no, he's not. We need to tell you about him. I was like, oh, no, you're just lying. Even though I knew in the back of my head they're not lying. Like, you know, I didn't yeah, want to... that's what was confusing her parents as well, though, because she'd just met me called Marvin and she's there telling her to keep away from the Marvin. Marvin. Yeah. That's you know why there's I mean? complications in the beginning. At that point, when the police um, came for his first arrest, did you find out his age? Yeah. The police yeah. told me. And? The police told me. By that time, you're too brainwashed. It's just, it's, it was too far gone. Like, you're talking months and months into it, but it might as well have been six years. Mm -hmm. I don't think... Anyone knows his age yet? How old so, was he then? You thought he was 21. He was 39. Wow. And I was 15 when I met him, 39. Mm. Yeah, just, yeah, 39 he was, yeah. He did. He looked younger than his age, you know, he, 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 could, he could have passed for it, but if it had really, like, been, you know, streetwise, you're right, which, Person, you're not going you to know, you? you're not going to ID it. someone. No, yeah. Like, show us your ID. You know, I just thought he was a bit older than me, but no, I didn't know he was 39. It was fucking disgusting. No, yeah. I didn't know he was 39. Yeah. The day that he stabbed me with the glass, he actually, no, that was the second time. When he, he went to stab me, the second time, he actually stabbed himself and, like, severed his finger. And then... That's when um, the, the, that's when the police got involved, and like they tried to like they put me in like this little the B and B place I think that's for bat, bat, battered vulnerable children and and women. But I still I still went back. I still went back. How did the police get informed? The neighbours. What it come to? I had one night. It, the attack was horrendous. Um, I was pregnant at the time. I'd only just found out. Um, but I just got myself a new job. I was kind of rebelling against them. Like, fuck it, you're battering me. You know, you're lying me down and you're taking what you want. Let's go. So I got myself a little job in a call centre and I did like a trial shift and he'd been out drinking all day and started accusing me, oh, your boss is a male, you fucking slag, whatever. And I remember just saying to him, I was just shut the fuck up, you think everything's about you. Look what you're doing to me. And then I just remember feeling bang and I woke up un like I'd been knocked out unconscious and he was stamping all over my stomach and then he was dragging me out into the communal hallway like stamping and kicking shit out of me and the neighbour come running out and like kind of sweeped me up because I lost so much weight I was only a skinny frail thing and like we he took me to the hospital and that was the time when he severed his finger and I said to, when I come in, like, said, like, my boyfriend had done it. And the the hospital phoned the police, but, like, they didn't come. So I said, oh, can I make a phone call? And I phoned him and didn't know, like, they was listening and on the call because he was arranging, you know, to come up to the hospital. He was sorry and he'll never do it again. And mm. the, the hospital was surrounded by the police. So they did, you know, arrest him. But because of his severe finger, he had to go to Withenshaw and have surgery on it. I discharged myself out of hospital, even though, like, I was battered black and blue. Obviously, I'd lost the baby. Oh, you lost the yeah, baby? Yeah, to check that he was, was all right. Was it his baby? Of course, it was his baby. Um, 
course it was. And then a while down the road, I found out because he was sleeping with prostitutes, like it gave me an infection that blocked my tubes up. And that's when I got told at 15 that I wouldn't be able to have children because of what he'd done sooner. So he'd given you a fucking STI? That and... had been, yeah. 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 Bastard. Mm. Yeah. So then, obviously, I went up to the hospital to check that he was okay. Um, the police told me that. So he was... let me just get this right. He just beat you up and he's just cut his hand and you discharged yourself and beat him beating you up and went to the hospital to see him. Wow. That's how brainwashed. Yeah, so grooming works, man. That's it's mental. How brainwashed he had, man. Went up there and then the police said to me, oh, he's, he's going to get remanded now for this. And so I've gone back to the flat, the the crack, I knew where the crack dealer was dealing drugs from that night. So I walked up to the gay village and said, I need the spare keys for the flat. He was like, what's he done to you? And I was like, oh no, I got into a fight, I got jumped. He's like, no, he's going to go too far, he's going to kill you. And then I was just laying in bed and I hear the key and I'm thinking, well, it can't be yard him out because I've got his keys. And he comes and he goes, hey babe. They'd literally, they'd bailed him and then give me the sob story. I'm so sorry, I didn't mean it to happen. And I ended up forgiving him again. So they bailed him, even though he was arrested for assaulting you, mm. to the but, flat, and yeah. they knew you were at the flat? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they knew that I was at the flat. All my stuff was at the flat. Yeah. That's, that's bad. That's crazy, yeah. 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 Neglect. And then mm. it, the next day, it just all started again. Beatings just, again, it was just... I was just dragging me down. I was just like one So you lost the baby, you didn't give you a fucking day off? No, I didn't give me a day off. <laughs> No, no. I was just walking around like one big bruise and it was just, it was just, it was getting to the point where I could just, I was losing every part of me, like mm. physically, mentally. I just didn't know who I was anymore. Like, mom, mom, I would sneak out to go and like meet my mum in town for five minutes. You know, like if I knew he was going out to score drugs and stuff like that. And she'd say, oh, come home. And I'd be like, no, I don't want to come home. You just kicked me out. I'm not coming back and stuff like that. Disgusting. And then the beatings continued, I presume. Yeah, they, they they carried on. I think I was with him with them for about eight months. Yeah, about about eight months it carried on. And then about I think it was two weeks after like the baby incident, he ripped the front door off and was squashing me underneath it. And I had like my bra on and my pyjama pants and nothing else. And I just remember pushing past him and he had this... My dad always gave me 50p and he used to say, just keep it in your pocket if you ever need me go to the phone box. And I ran to the phone box. Sorry. That's alright. Tough. <clears throat> Tough, man. And I rang my dad and I said, I'm ready to come home now. And I went home, but then... I didn't... Still didn't cut... I still couldn't cut loose from cut him. Cut the cord, yeah. He'd come to my mum's street and say I'm here and then I'd be going back to the flat for food and like him trying to convince me to come home but then he was still smacking me about. I was I was confused. I wanted to be at home but I didn't want to be at home. I didn't want to be, be there but I did want to be there. It was just, it was such a confusing time. It's emotional torture. Yeah, mm. it's emotional torture, yeah. Emotional. Until you were going back and forth for a bit of a period. Yeah. For yeah. yeah, for months on end, um, and then it, I'd not seen him for a few days. I was like swerving his cars, coming out my mum's from the back instead of the front, like you know, trying to get my life back. You know, would you see him sort of waiting on the street? Yeah, so I'd go like the back way. What would he be doing? Just sat in he'd the car? Just, no, he'd just be stood on the street waiting for me. Like he knew what bus stop that I'd get you know, my bus to my friends from, because he knew that I was back knocking about in my side and, you know, but he wouldn't come into my side because, like, we used to knock about with, like, you know, the the the, the gangs, the boys, so he couldn't go on there and pull me off. So it was like, to me, I was like, yeah, I'm near your flat, but you can't come and get me kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And, um, oh, yeah, I was kind of breaking free from him and then he took, you were off me. Well, he, he took everything off me. I remember one day he bought me a pair of his trainers and threw my shoes in the bin and an hour later he took the trainers off me and made me go home barefooted. It was just so embarrassing. He'd just do stuff like that, just, you know, cut my clothes up. Like, just 
want to have makeup, it's not my makeup, or you know, I wasn't even allowed to bath or wash my hair. Or I mean, I remember getting punched one day because he walked in and I was trying to have a quick bath, and I got a black eye for that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and then I was kind of breaking away from him, and but he'd stole um, Jura, and I knew it was my nana's, and I knew mm. he'd pawned it, but I knew where the pawn ticket was. So he convinced, he said, oh, I've got the, he was, I've got the pawn ticket, you know, come down and, you know, get the pawn ticket and, you know, you can get the jewellery back. So I said to my friend, um, will you come with me? And she'd grew up in a care home and she looks a lot younger than, you know, me. And I brought her with me and as soon as she stepped in, I could just see his eyes thinking, here's my next one. No. Like, here's my next one, like... Calls you not to her, like, do you want a glass of wine? And, like, she just has never, like, experienced, like, that sort of life. And I'm trying to say to her, look, he's a dangerous guy. And then I'm like, right, we've got to go. And then he was like, no, you're not going anywhere. We're going to the shop for beer. And then we ended up, like, walking all the way into town. But I'd said to my friend, just go. Like, mm. like, because he was dragging me down, the, the you know, the street by my hair and she was getting scared. I was like, just go. And she was like, well, I don't want to leave you. And I was going, just go. You're going to make it worse. If you don't go, you know, you're going to infuriate him. And then that was New Year's Eve of 2006. That's how I met Marvin. Mm. Um, I was <laughs> waiting for him outside the shop. Um, I was talking to this prostitute um, girl and... You know, she used to see me, she'd like, and she know, like, I'd be hungry or something. Like, she'd slip me a couple, you know, of quid or, like, buy me a sandwich and stuff like that. And she was homeless herself, you know, she was selling herself. She, you know, she was taking drugs, but she was also scared of him. Like, she was, she, like, he used to batter the working girls, mm. steal off the working girls, take how, the money. How did he have so much control over the prostitutes? I don't know. He was... His sister was a prostitute. Yeah, so I don't know about so They just, I uh, think... He grew up in care, like, he had a real hatred for women. But why did they respect him? I, I it's, don't it, know. Because mm. it's, it's, he could charm the birds out of the bees at first, and, you know, he get you under that spell, and then you're under that spell, and you just do anything to please him. I don't know what he's got going for him, where he can intimidate people like that, but he mm. is a nasty yeah, individual, he, especially he, when he's on crack cocaine. He is an animal. Well, we mm. got a message off one of the girls who know him, didn't we, Tasha, and she said he'd been going around 20 years doing the same thing to yeah. girls. When I, a, he got one of her mates on crack as well, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. and on the game. And on the game. Yeah, yeah. so I was went to town that night and I was, I see this guy on a bike. Bally on gloves on. I thought, <laughs> that why bloody does he keep looking at me? But I try not to look because I'm not allowed to look anywhere. If I get caught looking, you know, I'm going to get a slap, especially as, you know, it's a lad on a bike. He would probably say, Oh, is that your boyfriend? Oh, have you been with him? Like, you know, stupid stuff that he used to say. And he comes over and my, my heart's thumping in my chest as I just knew automatically he's going to speak to me. <laughs> and like, Mike's come stumbling out of the shop and like, obviously, he's pulled his balaclava down and gone, what are you doing with her? You better not be getting her to be a prostitute. And literally, I felt the blood drop from my body and I just thought, this poor guy does not know what he's going to cop for me for speaking to him like that. Because I thought he was then going to turn around, Mark, and either start with him or start with me. And it was the first time I thought, he's scared of this man on the bike. He's actually scared of someone. Mm, she thought he was invincible, didn't I she? thought he was invincible. I was like, I wanted to laugh and mm. say, ha, you know, how does he feel now? You're scared. You've got like, open, so. Yeah, he was shouting at him. And then I, I just, sent him into the shop. I said, get in the shop and get some beer or something for yourself. Love get out of my sight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so I was stood there like, and then he was like, what's your name? And I was like, yeah, hey, don't speak to me, fuck off. And he said something like, I like you. I'm going to marry you one day. And I went... <laughs> God, this world's full of weirdos, <laughs> something like that. And then we got chatting and, like, he was saying, like, you know, you need to get away from him. Even though I was an addict, I just I knew he this was guy a was a monster, you know what I mean? Yeah. I know I wasn't a bad person. I knew so. he, I knew Marvin was a crack addict. Because I was, I was buying crack when I met I him. I heard him scoring crack, but to me, I lived with a crack dealer. I was being beaten and God knows what, off a crack addict 
So to me, like it, it didn't normal really. Normal someone a crackhead so speaking to her, I guess. It's yeah, normal, it was just it? like yeah. a normal thing. Yeah. And then he gave me his number and said, like, oh, phone me if you ever need me. So like I said, well, here's mine, like that dialed it and said, you've got my number now. And then he was watching us in the shop and then he goes off and says, like, phone me if you ever need me. And then it was, what was you saying to him? You better not have been telling him what I've fucking been up to. And I was like, why? What have you been up to? You say you do nothing wrong, so what have you done? He's like, don't you get lippy with me just because you're speaking to him. So I was like, you're scared of him? He's like, I'm not scared of no one. I've been in prison with him. So I said, well, why didn't you say nothing to him then? And he just crapped me at the back of me and he went, shut up. Like, stop back chatting me. Get up the road and, like, push me up the road. I just actually, for once, I found it funny, like, you are just so losing control of me and you just... He, he was losing control and he just he just didn't like it. I was mm. starting to grow a spine, I suppose, find my voice and just be like... Because, mm. you know, when you're getting beaten up and on a regular basis, you, you, you after the first couple of times, it doesn't hurt. Sounds weird, it doesn't hurt. You, you forget all the pain. It's like you're under a spell then, isn't it? Yeah, you yeah. like, you don't matter how many times, like from the last couple of beatings that he was giving me, I was laughing at him. Like, laughing at him, just, you know, get it up. Because if I laughed at him, he'd get more infuriated and then, so mm. it, he'd batter me quicker because it'd be more violent. So then he'd get off me quicker, kind of thing. And then you, you just, you, you know, you just, I don't know, you just zone out, like you just, become, you're yeah, there, you're but it, you're you? not there. Like, you take, you're taking, I take myself off to somewhere else, sit there and think of other things, and then... So you're basically saying you lie back and think of England, didn't it? That's what it's like. That's yeah. it, yeah. yeah. That's lie back and think of England, and it'll mm. be over with you, be all right, kid. Yeah. And then he took me to the gay village, and I don't even know what he hit me for. Oh, he hit me because I wouldn't dance. I mean, oh, I'm allowed to dance now, like... I know normally I've got to sit in, you know, in the corner like, while you're getting pissed. And you just started smacking me in this nightclub. And do you know what's funny? It was the same as the supermarket. People don't help you. No. They watch. it be, oh, look at her. Like, but they don't come over. Never in my experience. And I've been smacked in public. I did it public. I was in town once in a taxi and I watched some guy volleying a girl in the head. And I went to the taxi driver stop this taxi now, let me get out. And he went, mate, don't even bother. I went, nah, stop. I got out, I ran over. I went, lad, what are you doing? Pushed him as hard as I could. The bird just started going, what are you doing to my boyfriend? Leave him alone. I think that's why people... Get off my yeah. boyfriend. Yeah, that's Honest why people God. don't get in it. That's yeah, what I think yeah. that's why people don't get involved. So no one helped me. That's but exactly then what happened. He phoned me at, t at the time and said, um, like, oh, you know, are you, are you safe? And I was like, no, he's battering me again. He was like, try and find a way to duck out the club. And I tried twice until the bouncer was like, you know, blocking him from, the bouncer could yeah. see like I was trying to, you know, get out and then. Why was the bouncer not involved at the battery? I can understand, <laughs> stand by us, well, I can't understand him, but, you know, appreciate it, the fact it, that it, they might not want to get Some people down. see it as a domestic, Surely a don't they? Like, it, yeah. it was just like, just calm down now, mate. You, you know, know you see, you, you, you think two people are fighting, but it's really one fighting, one, isn't it? You just think but it's a one But as a bouncer, one that's your fucking your job. job. I've seen loads of bouncers do it, just let, let you let fight. Because then it's, if you fight, then they've got a reason then to, you know, throw you out. They don't really want to split a fight up and then leave you, you know, in the club. So yeah, then Marvin come down on his bike. And then um, I just chilled with you for a bit, didn't I? We was yeah. chatting, like, you know, he was telling me about how, like, he was adopted and, <clears throat> you know, stuff like that. It was dead fascinating. Like, I'd never met anyone, <coughs> sorry, like Marv. Like, he was just so fascinating. And, like, <coughs> I'd never met anyone that had been to prison. So it was like, wow, this guy's really cool. <laughs> and, like, I came out of there with, like, a little spring in my step. Mm. I'm like... Yeah, I've got this, and then I'm going, trying to go back home. It's New Year's Eve, and my dad's ringing me, and the man Mark just comes out of nowhere, and just like starts like dragging me to his flat, and he was like, "I know you've been with Marvin," and you know, I just, I just went, "Yeah, I have, you know," <laughs> like that, and I got the worst beaten for opening my mouth that night. 
like unknown to man. And then mm-hmm. to humiliate me a bit more, because he knew that I liked Marvin, <clears throat> he decided to rape me. And that was when I, I never stepped foot back in there again. That was it, it was game over. Mm-hmm. It, I, it happened before, but this, it was just different. It was just trying to degrade me because like all, all he kept saying was, you're mine, you're mine. And I was like, I'm not yours. I'm not yours. And like every time I said it, he'd punch me in the temple and he'd be like, it, I just wouldn't cry that night. I wouldn't cry and it was infuriating him. And then he um, took me to Liverpool the next day. I, I couldn't get away from him. I just thought, if I play the long call, like he'll have to come down off his high and he knows he's got to let me go back to my mum's at some point. So I'll do what I want. And then I told the, the, the coach, the man in the coach station, look, he's holding me against me. All I want to go home to my parents. And I did. And then that's when, you know, the child investigation team, you know, they got involved, but then I wouldn't work with them. Because were you about 16 at this point? Yeah, I was 16 at this yeah. point. Because <clears throat> I didn't understand that they were saying that I was groomed and that I was being raped. And that I was getting angry at them because I was like, well, I wasn't. I was in a relationship with him. It's confusing. It took me years after, like, near enough to my 20s to realise what how wrong it was. Like, it took me an awful long time to process it and realise, like, that is not normal. Like, people do not do them sort of things to another human being, let alone a child. No. So it did, it took me a long time and that's why I wouldn't work with the police. And then obviously I went to live with Marvin's niece because my little brother had been snooping on my phone and even though I knew he was called Lee, I put him under as Marvin because he said, oh, everyone calls me Marvin because it's my birth name. And obviously my mum and my family knew Mark as Marvin. So when my little brother's been reading text messages, they've put two and two together and come up with 26, but because both the names was the same, and I'm saying, no, he's called Lee Marvin, she was going, you're lying again, I am mm. sick of your lies. So then <coughs> I was yeah. going to go and stay with my friend, Catherine, and he said, come and stay with me and my niece and the babies, and I was like, no, no, like, you don't even know me, like, you know, you can't take me in under your wing. I didn't want to be another burden to somebody else. Like, mm-hmm. it was like I was getting shit from place to place. Like, I didn't know my place in the world or, you know, I didn't even have a cardboard box to call my own kind of thing. And then I moved in and Shira was, she was only a couple of years younger than me and we, we clicked, we, we got on really well. She had two kids under two. She had a little boy and a little girl, so like we used to chill and he was on license, um, I remember being in bed one morning and because he used to disappear, but say, don't tell Sherelle. And he'd throw the stone up at the window because he had to come back, you know, because he had a curfew. <laughs> so I'd sneak down and let him in because he was sure, tagging the curfew. So his, his niece knew she wouldn't, you know, let him live there. And then one morning we were all fast asleep and I heard, bam, 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 police, police. Door gets booted off. Loads of police come rushing in the house. I've never seen the man so frightened. He just gets a parcel or what, on the side of his mouth and he goes, Oh, in his ass cheeks, he goes, well, cares, it was nice knowing you, but I'm going back to jail. <laughs> like that, so I went, oh my God. So I can hear Sherelle going, you leave my uncle alone. And they, they was like, where is he? And he was like, in there with his bed. So he's coming in, he was like, I've not done nothing. They went, we're not here to arrest you. They was there to arrest her baby's father for a crum- <laughs> crime he'd committed mm. four years previous. So he goes to jail, her boyfriend, then he gets recalled back. Yeah, so it's recalled. just the girls and the babies together. Yeah. And it was, it was it was it was a great happy time. I lived there for what a great happy time without them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> happy time without them. Yeah, I remember <laughs> so he got locked up, her boyfriend got locked up, and then he was wanted, he didn't come home and his niece was like, he's, he's wanted now. Like the police kept coming going, has he come back? And I remember being at my um, sister's getting my hair done one day, and his niece told me and she said, uh, my uncle's locked up. I said, how do you know? She went, he's just phoned from strangers. He wants to speak to you. Um, can you get back in half an hour when he rings back? So I said, yeah. 
So, you know, Marv's got a reputation of, you know, being this hard man. Like, you know, Chevelle's never, never seen anyone shout at her uncle or anything like that. So she goes, oh, it's strange ways. So I went past me the phone. Hope you're enjoying the podcast. Here's a quick word from our sponsor. <laughs> know what that sound means? It's more sales being racked up on Shopify. What do you think of Shopify, Jen? I absolutely love Shopify, the all-in-one commerce platform to sell, grow and make money for your business. Have you used it to boost your business? 100%, <laughs> yeah. So Shopify makes it simple for anyone to sell from anywhere in the world. From creating your online shop in your own look. To finding new customers to scaling your burning idea. You can do it all from one place. With no need for skills in design or coding. It's how every minute of every day, a new seller makes their first sale with Shopify and you can join them. So what is your favourite UK-based business that's found success with Shopify? It's got to be Gymshark. They have grown massively thanks to Shopify. Now it's your turn to start selling today with Shopify for free. And thanks to 24-7 support, Shopify is there to help you every step of the way. Sign up for a free 14-day trial at shopify.co.uk slash Sean, S-H-A-U-N. Go to shopify.co.uk slash Sean right now to grow your business today. So that's shopify.co.uk forward slash Sean, S-H-A-U-N. Thank you for supporting our sponsor. So I went, hello. So we thought it was Charlie. went, hiya, babe. I went, don't you hiya, babe, me, you little bastard so he found it hilarious and he was like do you want to go with me found it hilarious that she was trying to tell me what to tell do him what going, who do you think you are do you think you could just get off and leave me in, it, in this house with these kids yeah. <laughs> he was like I told you you could go home at any point you know, I just you know, wanted to make sure she was safe and get away from that monster th that's what he said home. to me on the phone and I went to him well how do you know that I'm safe you know you've not been here and then I went up to like visit him in the prison, didn't I? Yeah, you went up a couple of times, didn't you? And you I was telling mouthful. her to get rid of yeah. him. No, every time I was saying, <laughs> "Listen, you need to get him out of your life. Get him, you know, do work with this team. Who want him locked up because he's a monster." Do you know what I mean? And when she did finally get him locked up and got that strength, you realised how what a yeah. weak person he was. Because he was, he was even when I was living at Chevelle's, he was still beating me up. You know, so how was he getting to you while you were living? If there? you go into the town centre. You know. So she wasn't scared. She was scared to go in the city centre. Yeah. Like obviously, you have to go. You know, you've got to go out the house. So like, you know, you got go to town or I go and, see, you know, see see my parents and whatnot. And you know, it seemed like every ch every time that I did ever go out the house, you know, yeah. he'd be there and he'd be beating me up to the point where I was too scared to even then go out the house because he'd be like, mm. well, is he stalking my like? So you just walk into the centre of town. And he just start attacking you. Yeah. 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 So it was time for him to go, wasn't it? He can't stay uh, on the street like that. Yeah. No. Then they remanded him to Strange Ways and... He went on my wing, though. No, nowhere near me. I think he went on a protection wing. But Yeah. And then he, he rang me and the police didn't even tell me that. For some reason, they bailed him from Strange Ways to an address in Liverpool. But he wasn't living in Liverpool. But the police didn't tell me until, like, he started ringing my mobile off... Um, you know, other numbers and stuff like that. And then that's when, like, I was talking to Marvin because I was talking, he had a mobile in prison. So, like, we, like we'd talk and he was like, what are the police saying? And I, like, I was telling him, like, the police want me to go to court. But, like, he's saying that, you know, I'm a grass if I go to court. And he was like, it, it's not, you're not being a grass, like, carry it. You can't be 15 not. and being assaulted off a 39 year old and being grass. Doesn't no apply. Child Doesn't apply. No child is a grass, end off. No. So he went. That's why I don't like all of it now. It's all crossed lines and it's all mixed and it's all mashed up and gone into a load of rubbish now, all exactly. that. We'll so talk about he that admitted next time. Beating, beating me up and he admitted, like, sleeping with my underage he said it was sleeping with me but like tried to say you know like he didn't know my age and and stuff like that but he wouldn't admit to raping me on new year's eve like that was his little power because he knew then i'd have to either take the stand against him or let that Your drop against this, it? it was my word against this because about our I, I was legal age so that we would have run a trial for so i remember getting to court and like he he was going to go guilty and overall and the judge, um, the solicitor said, look, he's 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 going to plead not guilty to this. Like the judge come out the chambers and like 
sat me down, cleared the courtroom and just said, look, I have read the details of your case. It is, it's very complex. Like, we know what he's done to you, but as far as the, the rape when you were 16, that is, he's going to protest that you was in a relationship. So what he was willing and to cause, do was go guilty on some and leave the rape on file, you see. Yeah. So he and was what was smart. the charges he wanted to Child, get guilty on? He, he pleaded guilty for sex with a minor and then all the assault charges. So, and the judge said, what will happen is I can sentence him today, give him a five plus tariff and then that'll be it. Or, you know, we can come back in a few weeks and you can do the trial, but my opin opinion when it comes to a juror, if they're going to find him not guilty on the rape, then it's going to really sway them to think that maybe you're lying about what happened when you was 15, even though, like, to, you know, the extent. Never straightforward, so. does it, for the no. so, victims? No. Never straightforward. You're not the, they're the victim until they've been prosecuted. I've always said it, like, we're like the guilty party and they're the victims until they've got stamps on the file. Guilty. That's how you get treated. It's true though, isn't it? Innocent until proven guilty. So he's got to be treated with all the innocent and respect until it, yeah. she mm. he's found guilty. So then they, they give him, sentence him to five years in prison. Um, Was that a relief for you? Yeah, massive relief. But then I went off the rails, like... Marv was recalled, so... I couldn't even see him, he was in Rizla. He'd been ghosted from Strange Ways to Rizla. Um, his niece's boyfriend had just got home from Kirkham. So like, you know, you could see the vibe going on in the house. Like they wanted family time. I'm like a, you know, a little nail. Third wheel. Knocking about, yeah. yeah. And then I knew this girl from near where I lived in Clayton and you know, she used to do fraud with like Moss Side gangwangers. And she was taking tops back to the shop, like, you know, to get the cash back. And she was like, do you want to do one? And I was like, yeah, all right. You know, I'd done a bit of shoplifting before. Like, <clears throat> and I was, you know, trying to make a decision of where I was going to go from his nieces. I, I know I'm not going back home because mm. I'm uncontrollable to my parents. I'm causing grief. <clears throat> I don't have his shoulders to lean on. So now I've got to be a big girl, go in the world, earn my own money. So then I fell into that and then like, every day we was out, we was doing credit card fraud, like from morning, noon and night. Like she got locked up, so I was the only girl on the team. Like we was raking in thousands, thousands a day. They used to have the bank managers working for him, the postman working for him, certain shops in town centres working for him. And then the shops that you didn't, there was ways that we could bypass the card machines with our, you know, cards. And we was... Really good fraud team it was. Like, it was very, very professional. It was like. a prof very, she was working for a prof very professional they were fraud, fraud team. So, yeah. um, gang, well, they had her as the face of it. She, she was the front all the time, When she? She was the I one going in. I had different wigs, like... She was the one going in. Different wigs and Because they could make your ID, so put my face on a driver's license, so I'd just get a hair Change piece. Change a hair piece So then when I'm coming out of the shop and it's coming on top, that'll be in my bag. So they're looking for somebody with a, a different red style. Yeah, different yeah. style hair. And I've not got that hair and on anymore. And she'd style it as well. You know, when they say, wait a minute, let's check your card, they'll be back in a minute. She'd stand there and style it out. You know, instead of panicking yeah, and leaving. that's what they wanted to see, you know. You know, if you panic and then all they go, right, we just need to phone through to the bank. And I'd be thinking, you can't go through to this, phone through to the bank because... There's, like, they used to make statements, so it'd have, like, your credit score on it. Like, the the, the best ones that you can get are, are, are debit cards, not credit cards. I was going to talk through the credit card fraud. How did this work? If you, if you get a credit card, like, some people will like, think, yeah, there's loads of money. It's not. It's, you, you're in debt on that card. Yeah. So if we got debit, debit cards, then we'd know it what had happened, right, is they'd have men working in the bank, right, yeah. doing, like, credit checks on random people, right, ordering cards in this person's name and then redirecting it to one of wow. our team's house. So she wow. wouldn't even know that she'd applied for a card or he'd applied for a card. Wow. 
Yeah. We'd have that card yeah, and she'd know nothing about card, it, it until unfortunately she got a max bill. Yeah, ten a grand. Because one day we that's what we did. We took ten grand we had. We, we you bought the ten grand's worth of goods. Electrical mean, goods. Right? Yeah. That's, yeah. We, you, you never got money you to get goods and then to sell the goods. goods about, so we got yeah. ten thousand pounds in one afternoon on TVs, sat navs, everything you could think of, and then we just sell them for half price. So you you were coming out of a decent amount of money. But the money was being shared, that meant a lot of ways, wasn't it? Three to four ways it was being shared, depending, right, if it was the Moss Eye boys and the Withenshaw boys, I'm only getting a quarter, even though I'm the one taking all the risk for and it. And I didn't know all this while I locked up, no. by the way. Mm. I didn't know what she was up to. Kept him in the dark. Yeah, because I, I was trying to make money to move out, but then you know, they take you to the clubs and then it... Oh, have you ever tried to sniff? And I'd be like, yeah. <laughs> Never tried it. And then I just got into the party scene. And as quick as the money was coming into my hand, it was, you know, it was, it was leaving my hand. And then it comes to my head and his nieces. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll move out. The police put me in um, a women's hostel. So went and lived there. It, I actually, it, was, it was actually nice vibe in there. <laughs> like you're living among the working girls and you think it's going to be... A horrible environment and for the majority of the time that I was there. You the know, working the, girls are quite the, kind, yeah, the kinder than exactly, you'd yeah. expect, you know what I mean? Yeah. You think they're not going to be but very then, kind people, aren't they? I got through it and then another a heroin addict moved onto my landing and I come in one day and I was in a mood anyway and she was sat there trying to shoot up with a needle and I just lost it and we started fighting and like, she ripped my top off and like she'd, ex she'd exposed me, like, do you know what I mean? Like, after everything I'd been through, like, with Mac, I just seen red and I just, I stabbed her through the leg with a fork. And then, like, the police brought me to my mum's and then they found me another hostel. I, I just couldn't stick to routine, so I was just, I was here, there, everywhere. Like, some days I wasn't sleeping, I was just, you know, making money, sleeping on my mum's couch, going to my friends and stuff like that. And it, that just went on, but I, I was getting arrested and... You know. She was proper rebelling, wasn't she? Yeah, like, was, she was like, a young little rebelling about everything. You was just fighting the system and everything. I think it, everything, all the times it? that I got bullied, like, like I was, I was game, like for it, like, like with with, with the lads. One day he said, "Oh, I'll have to owe you that one fifty. And I went, "No, you fucking won't." Like, I want it now. And he was like, "Who are you mm. talking to?" And he's like, "He's a gang member." And I'm talking to you. I want my one fifty now. And you know, it's like I was getting. You know, getting your balls. Yeah, getting my balls. I was like trying to get back at the world. You know what I mean? It was. I was a very angry person, but I was, you know, I was getting arrested. And all this time it was happening. Them days with Mark was getting out was getting closer and closer. Closer wasn't it? and closer, and you know. And that's you were still you still see. inside. Um, no, I'm. I went and I get no, out. No, not when now. I was doing fraud. No, I'm away for the fraud, and then I get out, and then. I got, what happened is I got arrested. Um, I got caught in a chorus. They said this is. Oh, this is it's concrete. This it's concrete, but they'd been getting a bit sloppy with the card. Like you're going in and they're declining, and they're wanting just wait there a minute. But they're taking the card and they're taking trying to take your ID. Now, I don't what happened to one of the links that was getting sloppy anyway. And I said, oh, I've, you know, I've had enough of this. Like you've took five thousand pound now. Don't be greedy. Eh? You know, don't send me back into another shop. And he was like, just one more TV. And you know what happened? I get you know caught in the colours. And then get locked up for 36 hours. He phones me mum, that's unbeknownst to her. She knows that I'm making money somehow. She comes to the police station, she's kicking off because you know she wants me out. And then I goes up into youth court and like the judge, he just looks at me and he just went, you're a disgrace, you, you know, your criminal record is a disgrace. For someone, a young girl, you're, you're age to have a criminal record like this, you should be ashamed of yourself. And I remember giggling. Like sometimes I giggle when I'm nervous and he thought oh, I was yeah, taking this was a mistake, thought was taking the piss out of him. I wanted to take the piss out of him. I was nervous and he was like, he was shouting at me, like, give me like fucking 700 pound fine, give me probation, tagged me um, for a week, something like that. And he was like, yeah. for laughing at me, I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. Every time you I see your name appear, I'm gonna keep the case for me. Deal and then the me, next time I see you here, I'm sending you to prison. He was gonna send us to prison, wasn't yeah. he? And he I had did, it in for you. And then yeah. I did get arrested again. I remember and Steve I did go back up no. against him. <laughs> but I had a job. So I got my boss to write to him to say, yeah, that's what Oh, it was a mistake. It. Like they had the people coming up. But I took the piss, I'd been out the night before on a bender. 
and they put. He was about to send her to jail, and the, that stopped it right at the last minute. Yeah. That what, he was the job. what was the second arrest? Um, I, I, another, another fraud, fraud. but I, I'd done it. It was a fraud that came back on me, so it's not something that I'd done in that time. That's why you got a squeeze. So that's then. why I got a squeeze. It was like an. You know, an old fraud that had come back to me. Well, I was meant to be up in court at 10 o'clock. I'd been on a bender the night before. I think you was back in jail. And the solicitor mm. phoned me at like one o'clock and I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm on my way. She was like, there's a warrant out for your arrest. You're going to go to prison. I was like, oh, they can't send me to prison. I've got to look after the dog. <laughs> and she was like, where are you? So I told him, she was like, you need to go and get a letter off your, you know, your boss. Say that, you know, you can't lose your job because you lose your flat and stuff like that. Mm. And that's when I, I just, just stopped. I got really scared. She gave up a yeah. job. She gave up a job when he got out, though. She wouldn't go, go to work. Go to prison. Yeah. When he got out, you wouldn't go to work, would you? No, I know. I left that job when he when he got out. I left. I left that job when he got out because I, I wouldn't come to the town centre. She wouldn't come to the town centre. So between just was he a court case? The last one. How long was it between he, then and when he got out? He did two years. He did, did two just years. Just over two years. And two he, and a half. He did. Been in it? court. You're sorting your life out yeah. and then you realise he's coming out. Yeah, yeah, he's coming out. I got my own flat then. I'm, I moved. Um, got my own flat. Then I seen his friend in town. He said, um, oh, Mark's looking for you. You know, he's going he's gonna to burn your house down. He's, he's not <sighs> forgot what you've done to him. And his mate used to be there. Like when he did me, he was a bully. I, I just didn't like him. He was a bully. I looked like, oh, he's just a bully. And um, then I was like, Said to him, oh, I'm not going out. I can't go out going out. Like, he's, he'll finish the job this time, Marv. Like, he'll kill me this time. And he was like, oh, I'm going to go fucking find him. And I was like, you, you can't. Like, you know, I was scared that he would do something and, you know, he'd go back to prison and I'd be on my own again. And then once... I found him. Yeah, you should. He found him and it didn't... I found him walking through the town with a girl pushing a buggy. And he's so got an order that he's not allowed so to mix. So he was with a 16-year-old, 17-year-old girl <clears throat> pushing a new buggy in a baby, a baby in a pram with a vest on. My baby girl. So and I'm, he's got an order that he's not allowed. What had a vest on saying my baby girl? No. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was meaning that. Because <laughs> you go, he had a vest on, my baby no, girl. I meant the baby in the pram was a baby girl. Yeah, yeah, right. It was a baby girl in I the pram. I was thinking... <laughs> <laughs> so, I was like, that's probably that's something extreme. he would do to be fair. So I, no. just, I just seen pure... Anger when I seen him. I just wanted to kill him, honestly. I really mm. did want it to just hurt him so much. But um, I caught him and I just caught him a cracker right in his mouth and blasted him hard as I can in his mouth, knocked him to the floor, gave him a few punches. And he ran off. And I was with a gang of people. I never told any of them what I was going to do. I walked, seen him walking towards me. I cracked him, split my hand open. And I said to the girl, is this his baby? And she's gone, no, no. And I said, you need to stay away. The same thing I said to her, I said to her, I said, you need to stay away from him as a monster. What are you doing with him? He just got out for raping a young girl. You know what I mean? And um, Then this, the police knocked on my door. This was Osman, on camera as well. Osman warned mm. him that he'd been telling everyone, I'm, I'm going to kill gone her. He'd been going around telling everyone he was going to kill her and they came with an official Osman warning for her to tell her that he was going to kill her. Yeah, they moved me, put a fireproof letterbox. Like I'm a new property and stuff like that. And then that warning like stayed there. And then we Yeah, she gave it, give it a letterbox to stop him putting firebombs through the letterbox. So you, I had special yeah. windows as yeah. well, like f fire windows. So like I couldn't get my post, I'd have to go to the post office for my post. Yeah, she couldn't get it, post through the letterbox. Because it all had to be secure because he was threatened to, you know, um, kill me. And then how did we we see the newspaper article one day, didn't we? We was looking at the newspaper it. and we seen him, he'd threatened two 12-year-old girls with a hammer. And tried to stab one of them. Just gone Because he got a ban in. Got enough, a couple of years for threatening kids again. He got a ban out of Manchester, so we weren't allowed to live in Manchester. We weren't allowed in Manchester, he got moved to Oldham, so we'd threatened two 12-year-olds in Oldham. People Just, like that need to be castrated. Yeah. Mm. Incredible. Yeah, so then he sent him back to prison then, so obviously I got a break again then. And then... He got out, you know, I'm getting, you know, well, no, because then I got attacked after that, didn't I? Tell and him what then happened. Matt comes Tell back him into what. the store. Tell him what oh happened. Oh, my God. Yeah. Don't see fucking bugger off. He, last time I seen him was 2019. 
and I had to get on a bus <laughs> and say to him, if you leave, if you, you've got to stop looking at it, I put your head down when you go When I her. was eight months pregnant. Just leave it oh. alone, I don't want to hurt you again. I had to tell him, I don't want to hurt you again. There's no point hurting him, what's the point? It's like, yeah, you know, you could just, there's some people you just, that it, violence is not enough, is it? So he just wouldn't stop. He wouldn't stop. It's obsession. He had an obsession with her, you know what I mean? So last time I saw him, <clears throat> I'm in a I'm in a shop. She's walking down the street. She gets shouted. She shouts me and goes, Marv, come here quick. So I run out and he's there. She went, he's just said something to me again. Me. Shoulder barge me. But he ran on a bus. So he was loads of members on the public on the bus. And he ran on this bus and ran to the back of the bus. And I ran to just attack him first. And I just thought, it's pointless. I get locked up. There's loads of witnesses. It just looks like I'm beating someone he up. He was trying to go to though, wasn't it? Because he turned around to my mum. God, I wish you'd forget about it. It was years ago. She needs yeah, to get over it. That's exactly what you said, yeah. We and I went, Marvin, don't fall for it. Get off the bus. Yeah. Mm. That's so what, I said that's to what him, he just wants. leave her alone. Just put your head down if you see her. Don't just don't go and then like laugh at her and all that. You know what I mean? Mm. She was a child. He seems to forget. He was like committing offences against children, do you know what I mean? He doesn't see it that way for some strange reason. No, you know? he's a monster. Yeah, he's a she real wants. bad, real bad piece of work. But so, then things didn't go well for you then after that, did they? Because when... you were living in a flat, obviously, with, you didn't have your letterbox, the windows are fucked. You're out of prison at this time. Yeah, get out, yeah, I'm out. And was there a settlement of life then? For a bit, but I was um, police I'll, all the I'll time. Say it. I'll say it. It was chaos every day. Like, he's um, a crack addict. Like, he's got like, a massive habit. There was no doubt in that. People was telling me, <clears throat> you know, he's going misses, missing for days on end. My door's getting took off in the middle of the night. Or, the, you know, the was at my house every single day. They're, they're hounding me. Mm. You know, he's out grafting. You might not see him for three days. I'm searching crack houses for him. I'm going into shops in town, you know, threatening big men, saying, you better not fucking have him in here. You know, the police are coming to my fucking door while you're harboring him. <clears throat> and then he'd come home, you know, after a few days, you know, wanted to get his head down, you know. I'd have to look after him because, you know, like I was scared that he'd go into like, I, I don't know what I thought, like, you know, he'd have a heart attack, you know, because he took, took that many drugs. So life was just really chaotic, but in, the mist of chaos, I was trying to find my own peace. Like I wanted to, I wanted to mature, I wanted a job. Like I was trying to say to him, like, come on, you need you need to get off the drugs. Like it, we'd been together like five and a half years before we got clean. And in the end, I just like I said to him, you know, you'll get clean, Marv, you will, you'll get clean mm. one day. Like I put him in rehab. He lasted the night, then he phoned me the next morning, he went, I'm fucking sick of these in here. Come and get me. Because the rehab him. they were scoring in the rehab where I was at, it's just a waste of time and it's futile. Yeah. So I got, as soon as he heard him talking about who's coming back with the parcel, I was like, I'm gone, I'm out of here. Mm. So I'll go See pick him up and then I'd drop him to one coat so I'm always going to go and score. And then, you know, you'd, we'd fall asleep watching a film, but like he explained before, he's just thinking, I can't wait for her to go to sleep so I can go and score. I'd, I'd put her to sleep, stroke her face and let her fall asleep and then run out the house and that's what it I'd is. wake up, he'd be gone. I know all the crack houses. He used to climb through the windows. I used to argue with him. He used to pull him out in front of people, didn't he? And say, you need to get home. And he used to say, you stole and he used to start giving him drugs. You're going to kill him. And like, obviously, you know, they'd just laugh and say, oh, fuck off, he's a crackhead. And I'd be like, no, he's a crack addict. He's not a crackhead. So I'd treat him like he's fucking, you know, a piece of shit. He's still a human being. So he really used to upset me, you know, mm. like he felt so, you know, worthless of himself and, you know, She's trying seen to help him. The, the, the front, didn't she? She'd seen the behind the front. I'd seen so the yeah. soft yeah. man at home, like, yeah. you know. She'd seen but, behind the front. You know, that like, when you was on a chill mode, you know, that. Like, to, you know, have food and, or we, you know, just do daft things and just, nice thing, I, yeah, yeah. I, you know, seeing them sort of, sort of things. So that's why, you know, I stuck with You've him. You've seen the good in me, didn't you? Oh yeah, hundred percent. I see, I seen the good in him. And I was like, for some reason, I always knew he was going to change. Like I used to say it to me, he used to go, no, well. She used to say it to me all the time, you are going to change. And I'd be like, yeah, all right. It's totally He'd be like, <laughs> everyone's going to say I'm going to be dead by the time for And I'd be like, don't listen to him. Like, yeah. just, just fuck him. Don't listen to him. You just, I, I wanted know. it to be true though, in a way. I kind of wanted to get, to be, to prove him right. You know, my sister did it till I was 30, didn't she? You're dead, you're going to be dead by the time you're 30. 
And then it was, you're going to be dead by the time you fought. You know what I mean? And I kept thinking, I'm not bothered. I'm going to die, you know what I mean? It was the way it was. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, life was still chaotic then. Very chaotic, wasn't it? Yeah, very chaotic. The police wouldn't leave us alone. Like, the police was at the house all the time for you, for me, wasn't they? Yeah, all the time. And they'd be saying to her, what are you doing with him? He's just a drug addict, you know what I mean? He's no good for you and all that, which was right at the time. I agree with her. I used they, to say to her, just go. They'd try I'm and no ask me who his drug dealer was and stuff like that. Oh, we can get him clean if you just tell him he's a drug dealer. Mm -hmm. I remember just laughing at the sergeant one one day and going... Probably half of Manchester. Yeah. Your guess is as good as mine. Yeah. How many drug dealers are in Manchester? Yeah. I guarantee he scores off every single one of them. Mm. What do you want me to do about it? I can only keep bringing him home, mm. you know? And then you went. I you... count my money in crack though when I was counting it. You know, money wasn't real to me then. I could never been teached about finances or anything like that when I was growing up. So I didn't know about money, finances. I didn't know about saving and whatnot. So. Mm. Every money was going on that. I cracked one, it gave mm. her. Well, I, and then I got myself. Obviously, job. I'd give care of money. Like if I made a thousand pounds, I'd give care of five hundred pounds, and then I'd smoke the rest mm. on crack, and she'd have the rest for a normal life. Do you know what I mean? Stash it away. And she'd stash it do like shopping and whatever. She'd live a normal life with it while I'd just go and smoke mine in three hours. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then I got a job because his addiction was just. But there was always this fear of Mark under the undercurrent, wasn't yeah, there? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to speak. Go on then. <laughs> Attitude, eh? Go on. 16 years. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't Can't go Can't you on. tell it's 16 years? <laughs> You're irritating me. Yeah, then um, I got a job. His addiction was, it, it was getting terrible. He was killing himself. He, people were telling me, oh, he smoked, he smoked 800 pounds today and, and stuff like that. And then. Um, He'd, he'd been gone for days and then I was in work, I think I'd done, it was, yeah, it was my first, first, I was doing my first day the next day and he got locked up, he phoned me from strangers, he said, oh, I'm sorry, babe, I'm, you know, I've been locked up. And I was just like, you know what, Marv, this is it now, like, uh, I'm coming to the end of my tether now. I got a cat with ass, I've had the police through my house last night, I've left my window open, they've come back in the middle of the night looking for you and they've trashed my house. Mm -hmm. I, he took my TV off the wall. I said, I nipped to the shop. I said, it's coming to the point now. They're trashing me out. They're not even just coming looking for you. I said, I've had enough. And I put the phone down. And then went to do my, my trial for work the next day. Loved it, smashed it, come out there, you know, on a high, like, this is a legit job. I'm earning legit money. Like, you know, I'm going to get somewhere now in my life. Like, I'm, only, I'm, st I'm still 21 at that time. But I feel, you know, much older. Like, I just... I need calm, I need peace, you know. Mark, still, I've still got the Osman warning over my head. Uh, the police are wanting to move me, and then I've got the police on my case over him. It's like I can't catch a breach, whichever mm -hmm. way I look. So me getting this job, I thought, yeah, this, you know, this will be good for me. I'll make my own little bit of money, out, but I'll also make friends. And like, so I did the job, and then I went for um, a drink with my new workmates, and my friend phoned me, and she was like, oh, are you, have you finished? I was like, yeah, I'm going to go home. She was like, oh, just come to such a person's house, but, you know, we're all having a drink um, in the garden. So I was like, all right then, you know, because it's on my way home. I get there and they're all, we talked about it yesterday, didn't we? Mm. When you're sober and people are pissed. Fucking like, annoying. Yeah, that's what I thought, <laughs> oh, fuck this. Because I didn't finish work till gone nine and this is like quarter to 12. So I was like, oh, you know, I'm going, and she was like, you're not going. I was like, I'm going, you're irritating. So I phoned a taxi, a local firm, I've always used this for him. And there's this driver, I'd never seen him before. And like, I told him where I was going, and it's literally £3.50. He was like, I want money up front. So I was like, okay, mate. Because before he got locked up, he knew he was going to get locked up. He'd, he'd give me, you know, a few hundred pounds, because you got you don't get paid from your job straight away. So, you know, I still have, you know, bills to pay. So I like, all right, mate, you know, here's £20. And I don't know if he's clocked the money or he was just a horrible person. He went, I want another 20 pound. I went, no. And I was like, 20 pound. I said, it's round the corner. I was like, I can walk it. He went, get out then. So I went, all right, give me my money then. So I've got out. I've walked down this road. I've walked down this road at four o'clock in the morning from my friend. You know, you've been drinking, you can't get a taxi. You know, I've, you know, I think I'm invincible because, you know, even though all the Mark stuff's going on, you know, the police are reassuring me that, you know, he's not in Manchester, you know. Yeah. Then we, then we, the road, yeah, yeah, then we found out that he got locked up. Mark was locked up, so 
at that point I wasn't, you know, scared of walking down the street like, you know, I was free as a bird. But on this street, you can you can see this street. So I walk from the top. So I walk from the top and like you've got like a petrol station there and then you've got like the houses that I come from there and then it's just like all bushes. It's just like a country lane, that's what it looks like. So once you get on the, the lane, you, you can't jib through and get off it and you can't jib through and get off it that way. You can either go back up and go all the way around or you can keep going and then get onto the main road. So that's what I did. I'm, you know, I'm not going to walk all the way the long way around. Mm. And I'm f phoning my mate for a chat, but our phone was off, obviously, it was late. And I'm just like thinking, oh my God, thank God I'm nearly home. Like, so I was waitressing, so my feet was hurting, you know, I've been on my feet all day. And I thought, oh my God, thank God I'm nearly home, I'm going to get to see the dog. And I just felt, bang, right to the left side of my face. And I thought, yeah, fucking hell, what was that? Like that. And I'm just feeling, bang, 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 all over my face. My head's going to the left. And I thought, yeah, what the fuck? So I've looked and I've seen this, these blue eyes. And I remember saying, no, this is not fucking happening to me again. And I remember just going, do you know who you're fucking with? Like that. And he's just dragging me everywhere by my hair and smashing fuck out of me. So I'm thinking, you know, am I getting robbed here? And he's, he's body slammed me on the floor. So I've got this money. I've got it. Like, I'm fucking... I can't see properly, like, blindsided me so I could feel my eye closing. Obviously, I don't know what, what injuries I've got at the moment. And I'm on the floor and I'm going... I'm thinking, fucking hell, like, am I getting robbed? So I just thought, I was just going, yeah, mate, you know, take, take the money, you know, you don't have to fucking buy me for it. And it just looked like right in my eyes, at the same time as like pulling my, like whipping my top. And went, it's not about the money, it's about teaching little bitches like you, they can't walk the street with men like me. I thought, oh shit, yeah. Now I, now I know, you know, why you don't want the money. And he was like, Phew. I passed out and what I didn't know at the time, he'd put chloroform over, you know, my mouth. And I could feel myself going in and out of consciousness. But what the doctor said at the hospital was, like a boxer, because you've been punched that many times and knocked out that many times, your body can react quicker to say, if you got knocked out, I can come round quicker. And that's why I kept coming round. And I, it, it broke my toe, I was like, bite marks all over me. Like, I was naked from the waist up, like, all my pants was ripped because I was a big girl and bigger than I am now. And, like, I knew I knew what he was going to do. I knew what he was going to do. And you were still conscious at this point? Yeah, I just, you know, come round again. Conscious. Yeah. And I just remember thinking, oh, I want to go to sleep. I want to go to sleep. But then thinking, you go to sleep, you know, what, you know, you know what's going to happen. You've been there before. You, you're not even over it. You're not going to get over this one. And that, so I'm going, all right, mate, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll do what you want, I'll do what you want, just, just let me get up, just let me get up. I'm in the middle of the road, you know, and I'm saying to you, you don't want anyone to see you. you don't, I'm not going to go to the police. If you promise that you're going to let me go, like, I'll let you do what you want to me. But in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, you, nah, nah, mm -hmm. you can get fucked, just get me up off the road. Because every time I tried to get up, I was, it's like I was drunk, I was staggering, and I just needed to just get on two feet and then figure out where I was going from there. So he like dragged me by my hair, but he didn't even let me get up. He was dragging me, and my, and my feet was like clawing off the floor. But I had no shoes on; like my shoes had come off in the process. And I remember him um, throwing me in the bushes and going to take his pants down and get in the back of my head, like you know, trying to force me down. And then this road is a one-way road, so you can't drive up that road. And there's, there was actually a sign. So as he's doing that, I'm going, no, 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 like that. So he's, he's like punching me, like I'm being like really rough, like with, you know, my breasts and my body and stuff. And as he's doing that, he, he was going to win. I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't powerful enough and I knew that like, he was, I was running out of excuses. Like he was, he was going to, he was going to win. And by the grace of fucking God, whatever you want to call it, this car's tried to come up the road and the headlights have gone beam right on us. And he's turning as he's turned. I never knew how to box with my left hand. Marvin 
taught me how to box. And as he's turned, I've just gone, fuck you, punched him and like legged it. And I, I didn't know at the time, I was head to toe in bright red blood. So I was knocking on people's doors and I was coming like to the curtain and like, you know, wouldn't answer, wouldn't answer the door. Nasty. And I could just, I didn't know where he was. I, I didn't even know where I was because of the chlorophyll. I was just like, I need to sleep, I need to sleep. And I was like crawling on my hands and knees, like my legs kept buckling. And I remember trying this woman's door and it opened and I just let off this harrowing scream. And I was like, fuck, because he took, he took my phone. He took, like, he'd, he'd left my bag for some reason, but took the contents off my bag. And I remember saying, the only number that I knew off my head was my dad's, because he had that to the day, he had that number. And I remember phoning him and saying, I remember saying to the woman, phone my dad, give me your phone. And she was going, please don't touch every, anything. And I kept thinking, does this woman think I'm, like, I'm going to rob her or something? And then I've looked and I thought it was sweat dripping off her. And it wasn't, it was blood and it was pouring because my, my eye socket was broke. The majority of I was fractured. My nose was broke. Um, under there was broke. Like, my whole face was, it was just, it was a mess. And she phoned my dad, I put him on last week, and my dad thought that it was Mark attacking me. Like, as I'm saying, oh, he's got me. My dad's going, get your hands off my baby. I told you you won't touch my baby again. <clears throat> and the, she was saying, no, no. What it is, she's, you know, she's come in my house, like, she's, she, she's been attacked. So she said, I'm going to phone the police and phone an ambulance. And I must have passed out because then I come round in the ambulance. But as I've opened my eyes, it's a male paramedic. And I've literally gone ballistic. I've started clawing at him going, I've told you, no, you're not going to rape me. Get off me, get off me. I just thought, you know, it was that man. And they had to sedate me, you know, bring me to hospital. But... At that time, my dad was polar. He had a prolapsed spine, so he couldn't walk properly. And we didn't know that he had COPD, so I wanted my dad to come to the hospital, but he couldn't come and my mum come. And I remember saying to my mum, Mum, what are you doing now? You know, I want my dad. I want my dad. And then, like, getting stuck into the hospital. And, like, even when I had my x-rays done on my face, I was passed out. I just kept coming round, you know, falling back to sleep, coming round. And my mum was like, who's done it? And I was like, I don't know who's done it, mum. Like, I, I don't know what's happened. And then... You know, obviously the police come and like, they had to take statements and take pictures, take swabs of me, cut my fingernails, like, you know, for DNA and stuff like that. And then they was trying to admit me to a ward, but I just, I wouldn't, I just wouldn't stay on it. Like people was just staring like, and you know, you could hear whispers and then I kept thinking, did they think like I'm a battered housewife or, you know, something like that. And I thought, I'm not, I'm not staying in the hospital. And I discharged myself from the hospital and my phone had been took. It was only a bash of phone because what he'd done before he got locked up, he dropped my phone in a bucket of water. He was a decorating apparently. <laughs> Even though we just had the house decorated, he was high on crack. So I'd just bought a cheap phone in the meantime and I was going to buy one that day anyway. So that... Adam down with he took my phone and um so I said to my mum, Oh, I've got to go to town. So she was like, You can't go to town with your face like that. I was like, I know mum, but I need my SIM card because Marvin's gonna ring. Like, and I was on autopilot, I think I was high off morphine or something, like like yeah. it and she was like, put sunglasses on. I was like, no, if you know, if people got to stare, let them stare. And I remember going to town, getting my phone, I went for a McDonald's. I, I was Literally, it felt like I'd, I'd been on drugs for days. Like, I just, like an out of body experience. Like, I know it's me, but at the same time, I don't. And then I get my phone and I put my SIM card in it. And um, I've gone around to my sister's friends because she was babysitting. And as soon as I put my phone on, I've got all these pings, voicemail, voicemails, people are ringing me. And I'm reading these messages and I'm thinking, the fuck? They're saying on the messages, how dare you message my daughter, telling my daughter you're going to rape her, you're going to mutilate her. I've got men ringing me go, going, um, how have you found my girlfriend on Facebook? Why would you send her messages saying that you're going to rape her every which way with weapons and all that? And I'm like, 
no, mate, like, you don't understand. I've just been attacked. You know, that person on my phone. But I don't think many people realise, once you lost the phone, you could get your number back. You just had to go to your SIM provider. So, in less than 24 hours, I've been attacked, and I'm getting all these messages and phone calls because he has been using my mobile number to go online, Threaten women, to phone women people, text people, telling them that he's going to rape them. Like, he knows where they live, he knows what they look like and stuff Crazy. like that. Like, I had to, like, you know, get the police involved with it and the police were like, well, can you change your number? So I was like, well, no, I can't change my number, yeah. You know, because, you know, Marvin's in, you know, he's in strange ways and he was like, well, we need to put an appeal out in the paper <clears throat> for the car driver. I was like, well, you can't name her. Like, he's in prison, you know, you've got newspapers, you know, if he sees the name. So they just put in, like, my age, where it happened and stuff like that. And then this, I got attacked the Friday night, early hours, Saturday morning. I had to phone the um, the chaplain on the Saturday and, like, say, look, because he wasn't entitled to VOs and he wasn't up to see if he was going to get sentenced or he was going to walk away for suspended sentence. So I had to say, look, like, me and the police said, look, this is what's happened. Like, I need to come on a visit. You know, I need to... Ex show him something, I need to explain something. So they said, OK, then. And they said to the police, you do know that Mr Richmond's going to have to become full security. So, like, here on, you've, you don't be scared when you go on. Like, no one's going to hurt him. But you've got to tell him when you go in there, you, he's, he's got to, you know, he's got to stay calm. For that whole experience that I've been through in that 48 hours, that was the most petrifying time. The most petrifying time to break his heart. It wasn't my fault, but I was going to break his heart. Because she was coming Looking at the visit, at my showing face. me that face, and I couldn't do nothing about it, could I? He, he's behind a door. Like, it would have been broke his heart anyway if he was at home. But yeah. I'm going to go on a visit, I'm going to show you, and then I'm just going to lock you straight back up. And you've mm -hmm. got no one to sit there and comfort you. I know I've got all my family at home. But he's got no one. Like, he, just his family are a shower of shits anyway because they didn't, have, you know, didn't care for him. And I remember, like, my stomach doing knots, knots. And, like, you know, when you, you're going into prison, you get to know the screws, don't you? It's like, bloody hell, kid, what's happened to you? I went, oh, I was in a car crash, you know. Like, I thought, I'm not getting into it in a fucking queue with all the fishwives in there. Yeah. Mm. And I remember walking in, and, like, when you walk in with strange ways, where he was sat, they did it purpose, like. So when I walked in, you just, like, because they, what was weird, it was like, this just had, like, scratches on, but this side of my face was, just, like, humongous mm. and I remember turning and looking at the screws and Marvin's jumped up and he's gone like that with a table what the fuck has happened to your face and they've all just gone like that and I've gone Marvin please I am begging you they're going to pull you off this visit you're going to give him any opportunity they're going to pull you off this visit Marvin because mm. he was like I knew I knew it was you and I was like what do you mean you knew it was me I read it in the yeah, paper and I knew it was you. And then when they said you've got a special visit because your girlfriend needs to tell you something, I knew it. I'll kill him. I'll kill him. And I was like, Marvin, you just need to, you know, calm down. Let me explain the situation, you know. And, you know, I, I had to calm him down. Like, he, But like I said, then, you know, he had to go back to his cell. And then he went up in court for another two days. And then, you know, I thought, you know, because of the circumstances... You know, they'd say, look, right, we'll give you a suspended sentence. Even the police, you know, they said, and the judge just said to me, unfortunately, you know, I've got a sympathy for what happened, but that's got nothing to do with him. And they give him, what did they give you? Three months. Three months. Maybe. Three months. Three months, said, take him away. Yeah, she tried to get me out on saying that, that she's just come through a bad time and she's, I support her. They still yeah, no, yeah, no, I think they give you a... I'm it's sorry, 12 dude. weeks or something. I'd had all the squeezes I could get. Yeah, so yeah. they just went, unfortunately, you know, he's took the piss out of the system, he's gone. Yeah. And I just remember looking at him going, yeah. this is your new now. This is, I'm not giving you sympathy anymore, Marvin. I'm off. And I just remember working out, like, I said some horrible was things. pissed off that I didn't get bailed. Yeah, I said yeah. some horrible things to the female judge, like, she got. We coughed up outside court, but then the police said, like, look, you know, she's bound to be angry. She thought she's coming in, you know, and a partner's going to come on because, you know, I don't know who's a tap man. Like, they haven't got a clue even where to start. There's no DNA evidence on man. They've, 
it's like the working off a blank piece of paper. There's no CCTV you on that road. You never forgot his eyes, did you? Mm-mm. Mm. No. So, like, I, I'm at home, you know, I'm on my own, and phew, I just thought, well, what am I going to do? Like, I literally thought my life was over. Like, I did try and kill myself. Like, I didn't want to live. Like, it's like you come all this far to go all the way back and then some. Like, mm. I've just been through all that. I, I've got an erratic boyfriend with a drug habit who I love, who I need to get clean, but I also need to try and heal from past trauma. Now I've got thrown into this mix. Mm. And it was such... Never stops, does no, it? No, it was ending, such it? a confusing time. And then I, I wanted to go back to work and the boss said, well, you know, until, you know, your injuries heal. And then he took me to the trauma unit and he was like, we need to put... Because, like, if you put your finger in there, it kind of sinks in a bit because the, yeah. the bone's missing. Fractures we need to cheap, put, man, yeah, a metal plate in your eye. But you will, unfortunately, have a scar from there today. I said, no, it's all right, you can leave it. But in the winter cold, it gets too cold. It, my nose and my eye socket burn and they swell up to this day. You no, know, like in the cold oh, yeah, weather. You can't wear glasses or anything, to, uh, any weights with glasses, kind of no. weight on your nose. No. Any, um, anything like that, it hurts. Like it burns. So got you know, be careful when it's too cold because it can start swelling back up. Because like all the um, blood vessels got popped, you know, in my eye. So I get I get pain in my eye to this day where smash the face. I in feel like I need to get a that's what it is, isn't it? It's spoon and scoop my eye out and scratch it or something to get rid of the yeah, pain behind my eye. Mm. Like it damaged um, a nerve. So. Um, yeah, so he was gone, but I didn't, like, my mum said, like, you know, move back home, and I was like, I don't want to move back home, I've got, you know, got my own flat, but, like, obviously I was scared because, like, they've got paperwork, so, like, I'd push the couch up to that door, like, push my dryer up to the back door, you know, scared. barricade yeah. myself in when I was at home, and even if my family asked me, are you on your own, I'd say, oh, no, such a person's here, or she's just gone shot to get as much as... And I'd lied to everybody to me was a suspect, mm. down to my own brother. Did you think for one moment it was something to do with Mark previously? You didn't get it. You didn't connect the dots, did you? No, no. I didn't. I did. Mark didn't didn't come into my head till <clears throat> maybe a little bit later. I was looking at the people around me, the people that had been in that house. You know, was it a new workmate? Like I was so. Suspicious and paranoid. Just he never mm. got caught. So anyone was the suspect after that, didn't he? Down to my he own brother away. because... He didn't get caught for a year, so it could have been anybody. Yeah, he got caught the, the previous September, wasn't it? Yeah, a year Or was it, it was. The coming up to the September? It was a year later he got caught. No, it wasn't. It was in, I got attacked in the May, he got caught in the September. Yeah, it was coming up for a year, yeah. Yeah, because I got attacked the week before my 22nd birthday. And she was the only one who could pick him out. Because he had the piercing blue eyes. Can you remember how it led up to him getting caught? Um, well, I could do, I did my statement with him and I gave him an effect, but only his eyes, but they were piercing blue. And like, the police, you know, they keep in con contact, you know, they check in with you. They was, they was brilliant. Like, sorry, but you know, we've got no update yet. You know, we're, we're checking the CCTV in the area. And and then it comes to we, we might have a link, you know. We've we've got something back off the CCTV, you know. We're just we're, we're working towards it, and that was going on from the May till the September. And I know the exact date that they phoned me. It was the nineteenth of September, two thousand and twelve. Because my nephew turned one that day, and I was at his birthday party. And my, my police liaison officer phoned me. He went, "We've got him," and I just was like, "What?" Like, to me, I never thought they'd find him. Like, you hear about, you know, women getting attacked, like, murdered, and, you know, never... Mm. Get the person never getting caught. So I was like, that's brilliant. He was like, here, yeah, this case is way more complex than we could have ever imagined. Mm. I was like, what do you mean? He was like, can we come and see you? So I was like, yeah, of course. So they come in there, me and you there. And I was like, what are you talking about? He was like... Kira is, is a serial rapist. So I was mm. like, what? He was like, there's four in front of you, there's you, and there's the one that he got found at the scene three nights ago. My first thought was, 
you've had him for three nights and you didn't even tell me. And, you know, you're just on autopilot. And he said, look, all I can tell you, you know, he got, they got found at a crime scene. You know, his DNA is there. And what mm. we were saying about the CCTV is he's seen stalking me in a petrol station. He's watching me. On the CCTV, you can see me coming down the road. That's going to lead on to Tanya Brow the path. Mm. And you can see him in his white Bolingo van and he's watching me. And following her all. Yeah. And then he turns his van, hides his, his van goes out of sight. And then it doesn't get seen till 45, 50 minutes later in the time he was attacking me. Then you see him getting in I his remember van. remember that, yeah. And he tried to deny it was him, but unfortunately for him, he left the petrol receipts in the glove department and a piece of my clothing was found at his address along with my mobile phone. Kept as a trophy. You told me where the phone was found. Yeah. In his girlfriend's knicker drawer, who was pregnant at the time, to him. He was, she had a flat in um, Stockport. So it was funny because when he was doing his crimes after he, he, he'd attacked me, my brother was a floor fitter and he fitted this f floor in this flat. It turned out it was his brother's floor. Yeah. Mad that, innit? And he was mm. in the house at the time my brother was fitting the floor. Yeah. And my brother didn't realise this till he got to court. Yeah, brother fitted his floor, his brother's floor. It's crazy, innit? Yeah. And he said, I could have got him. I said, you know, so you can't you know, just go around, you know, pick it up, you know, random strangers. But, yeah, we got found at, you know, the last crime scene of this woman. And um, someone come out of a pub. He, picked, he prayed on, you know, if you've been out for a night out and, like, she was only stood outside the pub having a sick. He she banged some even woman that had, she couldn't eat food for two this years. This is the woman, yeah. She was just, she had a straw. straw. for two years. Yeah, that was, and she, he got found at um, this, this scene of her and tried to tell the person, the bypasser, oh, look, I was helping her. Yeah. So what was the case on that one? What did he get? What? No, no, what was uh, the, the events? So she left the pub. Yeah, she was on the, like, you know, walking up and down, you know, like having a cig. I'm assuming she was on a phone or something. And, like, he's come out of nowhere and attacked her. Yeah. yeah, and then uh, eventually a screams has alerted someone, like a passerby. Yeah. And he's come and, like, pinned him down. Oh, he didn't have an age. He'd target anybody, any She woman. was the same age as my mom. Any woman walking down the street. Yeah. I think they were under the influence. We watched some videos of him and it was just a creepy. It was just a merry, happy-go-lucky girl walking down the street. Yeah. And he'd go past in his van slowly. We, yeah, we had together. to watch the CCTV. Stalking them, proper stalking Like, there's a young girl and he attacked... Send shivers through your body, Amy. Was, oh, my mm -hmm. God. He attacked her in Stockport Town Centre and you can just see every time she stops to look at her phone, he goes. Yeah. And she stops. Them people and are he's real, just, man. just, you know, weaving in and out. And it, it's, it's surreal. It's just like, it's something you would literally watch on the TV. Yeah. Like, it's scary to think that you could be walking down the street and there is someone doing that Yeah, things. that's it. Like, and you'll look behind him, think, and then think, oh, God, it's me, it's me, I'm playing games with me. And it's not. Now like, she it's, knows it's now not. I know, she. Yeah, now I know She's now that it's not. She's a victim of violence, mm. so she knows yeah. it. Mate. There's people like that out there. Was it one of the victims nearly drowned? Yeah, so um, she was, I was number four, she was number five. And where I got attacked, Tanya Brown, if you walk a bit five, five minutes up the road, you have a place called Debdale Reservoir. That's where she got attacked. So obviously in the May, he was doing his rounds in Gorton. <clears throat> and she was walking down the footpath through the park. Because what had happened is she, that night, she, her child's dad died just on a I think he had a heart attack. So she was, you know, up there, you know, sorting things out. She's obviously, she's had a drink. And she, you know, she walked home to clear her head. He attacked her, he knocked her to the front 
<coughs> teeth out. She's got, you know, implants in her teeth now. Um, you know, raped her. And then while she was passed out, because again, like he used chloroform, he threw her in the res reservoir. Left her for dead in the lake. Yeah, and then went home and Googled, woke up the next morning and Googled woman dead in um, Debdale Reservoir and it come up no searches, so he knew she wasn't dead. Yeah, so there was no one confirmed dead in Debdale Park late that night, so he knew he'd got away with it again. He'd too. got away with it again. And so then back on his a few nights well, that girl, later. bear in mind, remember, she just lost her boyfriend a couple yeah. of days before, so she just, you know, newly a widow. And she gets attacked off somewhere. And he, and he was escalating it to murder. Oh, he was going to be a murderer. With yeah. that the, the papers about, say it. He was going to be yeah. a killer. The police say it. He will. But she had a locket and she'd been to see a, a child's father and she caught a bit of his hair off. He took that locket and to this day she never got that locket he back. back. He would not tell her where that locket was. I know mm. he, his girlfriend knew and no one would tell her where that locket was. She begged mm. for that locket. Because it was the last piece, like it was, it was inscribed like the names and it had the lock of his yeah, hair in it. Terrible. And in, to this day, she never got that. She moved out of Manchester in the end. She's moved she down south. Be. But I speak to her. I speak to her on Facebook, and stuff like that. Yeah. It's harrowing that court though as well. Really difficult because all his uh, family and friends was there supporting him. Is that where it came out about yeah. the textbooks? Yeah. Yeah. So what what happens is like the police they come and like prepare you and they've got to like you know show you like what evidence they can't tell you about someone else's case they can just say look this victim right. one two, two. yeah mm -hmm. well, they can't go into details they can just say look it's you know very serious what he's done and then they come to me and they said um look we found all these we've raided his mum and his dad's house it's, at first he said like uh, this is what he's called you know, he works in a primary school, he's cleaner. And I was like, what? He works for St. John's Ambulances, he's training to be a paramedic. But he has been on the police radar before. So I was like, what, what do you mean he's been on the police radar before? He's never been arrested. He's, he's been given a caution, he's never been convicted. He used to go up and down Fallowfield, the student area, and get his bits out and flash to women. Mm -hmm. And this was just a few years previous. So I was like, so you're telling me he was on the radar? Like, and they was like, well, we raided his, like, his mum's house and we found all these books. That's what it is, or you can't jail him for life for flashing, can you? They pulled all these pictures out of all these books and I was gobsmacked. Absolutely. Reading all these books, how to mutilate women, sadistic books, how to choke cold women, like, Books on it took me, books on it's been what, colours. 10 years? It took me about seven years to be able to put a chain around my neck because he choked me that much. Mm. If someone touches me the wrong way in my neck, I freak out. She, she mm. barely, barely gets takes a hug off her mum. She doesn't like No, it. I don't, don't. She can't no. get close. I just, just don't. Like, I remember going to get my makeup done one day and they, she touched my neck the wrong way and I freaked out, I started crying. Like, you've, you've got a lot of like marvel. Because her mum's a bit too clingy to her, you know, because obviously it's a mum, she wants to hold her too much, she can't handle it. No, I don't, I, I don't like it. Or you'll, like, go like that to me joking, and I'll mm. go, don't touch me like that. Well, you've like, seen that, like, Everything just, like, f floods back, like, you touch me a certain way, like, it just, like, it, it all comes comes back. Mm. And then when I seen that he had them books and, like, you know, I had bruises round my neck and, like, what... No, he, he must have been sat there, like, laughing at us, reading well, through the Well, if he takes box. smelling salts while he's going on smelling his little rapes, he's doing, he's got some twisted stuff going on, hasn't he? Mm. Taking chloroform. To chloroform <laughs> Serial to killer in the making. Yes, yeah, Knock you out. Yeah, the judge yeah. said that. It's yeah. chloroform to knock you out. Well, he started flashing. Very, very That's how they usually start, like... That's it, um, you're right, yeah. It, Wayne Cousins started with... Yeah. Um, flashing a charges. Yeah, a few yeah. experts yeah. have said about the flashing as well. Yeah, That's yeah. where it starts, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They are the, the type of people who do progress and go worse, don't they? And it, the crimes go deliberately worse, don't Not they? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's the type of people who it happens to, yeah. I mean, I was, uh, my crimes, when I met her, I vowed not to commit anything serious again. Like anything, what would give me bare jail, didn't I? Yeah, so you only did little sentences. Never was going to do anything more than a theft because I didn't want to leave her on her own after that, what happened to her, you know what I mean? But yeah. Definitely. So, yeah. He, so he was known as the textbook rapist, is it? Yeah. 
Uh, that's what the, the papers named him. Papers named And him. what, was there a trial? Yeah. I'll tell you. Yeah, there was a trial. Um, the trial didn't come till the October of the, was it the next year? Yeah. Yeah, they, they took, obviously there's six of us, so like, just to build one court, ca court case takes time, so six of us. Yeah, and then like, the, you know, the building you up for the court case. Um, at that time, I'm like, back at work. I'm like 15 stone, like comfy eating. Just to, I don't know, maybe change my appearance, like getting bigger and bigger. And then by the time it comes to the court case, I was a size six. I did a U Twitter and thought, mm. okay, now he knows what I look like. The, everyone knows what I look like, the papers. I'll change myself again. So like within that year, I'd lost over eight stone, but did developed an eating disorder. I de developed bulimia. Um, and body dysmorphia. And body dysmorphia. Um, so yeah, then they come and they prepare you for the court case and you know, you've got to go through intense chats like all the time, like for hours and you know, you go through evidence and... Because basically she was the one whose evidence they needed to convict him. Because no, everyone, they was like all passed out, like so... They was going on the stand to tell what they could remember, to tell the jury, look, this is, you know, where my injuries come from. Do I, did I see him? No. But I did, I did see partial of him where as no one else did. So then, yeah, then they build you up, you know, for your court case and they say, and you know, I honestly fuck, this man's got to go guilty. Like he's not, he's not going to run a trial. And when they said to me, he's going, not guilty, I just thought, you know what, you've got some audacity to do what he's done. And then, but I suppose that, that's why they like it, don't they? Like, rapists and, you know, they like to, the, the victims relive it. to relive, relive it. it. Mm. Like, Get all his evidence by going not guilty. Yeah, and then... That's what he did it for. They, mm. So they prepare you for the court case and then it, the court case kept getting knocked back every couple of days because there's so many people saying so many things. Mm. You know, I was meant to go this day and then I couldn't go. I thought, you hype yourself up for it. I'm like, you know, he's in the dark. Very stressful. Yeah. That's why I stopped committing crime. What to see how she was going through. Because you I sat there terrible every day. Watching her having to wake up and get dressed for court and all the stress it was causing at home. I right. didn't, I couldn't have the art to commit another crime again. I just, no way. Yeah, because you put never anyone, went back to jail after through that. anything like Something as simple as breaking your car, I wouldn't do it again because it causes so much asshole. It's just so heartbreaking and that's why I learned I learned off her, you know what I mean? I couldn't I couldn't commit crime and leave her yeah. alone anymore. You, know, you didn't go back after enough. that. And I bet I you were glad you were that. out for the court case because imagine her having to go through that on her own. On her own, yeah. Because he yeah. was the only one that had let sit in the courtroom. I didn't go back to court, I didn't go back to jail after that. I've still not been back. Since. So yeah. did, did he stir you guys down in the court? Yeah. Yeah. He, he did. That. He gave him a pen and a paper to fucking drama. Yeah, what? <laughs> to do his little doodles. Yeah, he'd give him a pen and a paper. So just smiling. Chill. Yeah, just He was chill. smiling, did you say? Yeah, he was smiling. buzzing off at all. Was, was he? Off at all. Yeah, oh, yeah. Off at all. He looked like he was on a day out to Blackpool then. Eh? Yeah, he loved it. Mm. And he's, and he's... I was with his all little... With all his little supporters. Yeah, I Supporters? Yeah, his mum and his dad, his girlfriend and the new baby. Yeah, and he was all and there supporting him. His auntie, his auntie she was, was his number one supporter. Yeah, saying he didn't do it, this is what it's all the same. They were like them sit in front of me. She looked round to me and she went, You lying little slag. <laughs> you've got the evidence right there. You've seen the pictures. You've 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 listened to what he's done, and your his DNA's on some of us. There's video stills of him stalking me, mm. and his mum tried to say he was at home when it happened. When I got attacked, she tried to give him the alibi. alibi then, yeah, yeah. in the perjury, if she had, if they had videos. Yeah. But, but what did she get off with? A caution, just a uh, warning. If mm. that, and she bought him those nasty books. She, she bought. She admitted she said, to the police. Her court evidence was that like, no, he was not guilty. I bought him them books. She just stood to on learn the stand. From. She stood on the stand and said it. But like, as if like, yeah, I bought him a packet of sweets, kind of thing. Like, there was no emotion. Like, 
I bought no, if it was me, I bought in them books, and I'm really sorry, you, you know, know, I didn't know he was going behind closed doors. Do you? Pretty messed up family. But there wasn't Sounds like it. a rough family. There was. They weren't ruffians, no. It was very well to do. Well family. to do, like. Yeah. I don't know what's going on in here. Like, know, he dear. spoke like a fucking mouse in court. Yeah. Like a tiny little mouse. You don't know what's going on inside what? people's minds or behind closed doors, do you? Six weeks. But did that mouse sound like the man who attacked you? What he said? No. Mm. no. Absolutely not. What was no. he saying to defend himself? He was saying it was... that he was part. Of, he wasn't there. No, he. What's he saying in in his defence? Yeah, no. He was saying it was his mate. Now I know, and he knows why he's saying that. But the prosecution and the judge wouldn't allow it in court. There was two people when I got attacked. But you're not sure. You can't say no. 100%, can you? I heard another person's voice and I've always said No, I'm said saying it. that. You, you yeah. know that 100%. Right, exactly. You can't identify No, no, 100%. I don't know, but there was two people's voices. One was yeah. his and one was someone else. Anyway, so he was saying, um, oh, you know, he was helping me. He seen me get, getting mugged. That's what he said, mugged, and he was helping me. That's his running defence. But he can't explain why his, my phone's in his girlfriend's knicker drawer. Mm. You know, he, he can't exp explain how I know what he looks like. And, you know, he can't explain my injuries. The court case has lasted six weeks, so I was on the stand for... How many days did I go on the stand? Four. Mm. Four. And then defence lawyers are... They do just do not hold back. They literally, like I said before, I'm the criminal and he's the victim. They see me as the criminal. They see me as I'm lying. I'm trying to get their poor defendant locked up for nothing. He literally said, you're lying, aren't you? I went, no, I'm not lying. You are, you're lying. You're fabricating the story. And just, it, it, was, it was absolutely disgusting because when you do your police video, you know, your statement with the police, God, that went on for about two hours. You have to go to another room in the other side of the court. You've got to watch it. He's got to watch it, the juror and the judge. And mm. why, why I've got to watch it in another room is because they've got to see the emotions on my face when I'm watching it. It's so the jury can, like, gather how it makes, makes me feel like, so whether I'm a lying or I'm a telling the truth. Yeah, you mean they're just trying to check your response? Yeah, that's yeah. what that's worked, that reactions, yeah. So then you have to listen to that. And then obviously all the other girls, you know, they had to give evidence and it went on for Just six um, what happened, six what weeks. did his brother get locked up for again? Yeah, well, in 2019, because, you know, I'm having months here, um, my son was five months old, round about that anyway, and I was in bed and obviously he had a caesarean. My son, so I was, you know, I was still recovering and... I had a couple of missed calls off my brother and some texts off my friend saying, oh, I need to speak to you. Marvin come in and I went, what's the matter with you? And he went, Kira, I've got something to tell you. So I went, what? He went, Adam's in the paper. I went, I don't want to know, Marvin. Like, I literally, I don't want to know. I thought, to me, I thought, oh, has he escaped? So has he died? Has... What came next? I couldn't even have guessed it. He was, the newspaper had printed his picture again my statement from my evidence in court, because his brother was grooming underage girls for sex online. His little brother was a nonce as well. His little brother got caught being a, trying to groom underage girls. Well, but he's a groomed up. Groomed. Like been a in 13, a constant year, forth relationship. Sending you know, him. And just he, about to meet her for sex and then he got stopped. Yeah, he got stopped, however the way the police How did How old is he? He's in his 20s, obviously, and she yeah. was 13. He was sending a pic. Um, All sorts was going porn, on. Porn, like, like proper hardcore yeah. shit. He got a community order. Yeah, and the headline <laughs> was brother of... Community order? Yeah, the headline was brother community of order. monster gets caught with blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And he got... Front page news again. And he got a little bit. And he got, yeah, he walked out. They've got him walking out of court, smiling. He walked with a community order. Probably holding hands with his mum. That's yeah, it, yeah. Mm -hmm. most probably. What, yeah. what about the textbook rapist? What was his sentence? Yeah. He got sentenced to life with a recommendation of 15 years. How did that make you feel? Not good enough, was it? Were no. you there in the courtroom? And I was there every single day. Yeah. We was there every single day. It didn't matter whether I was giving evidence. 
Didn't matter whether I was sitting in for the whole day. I'd go in with him, sit down, look at him. So he knows I'm I'm still here. Every single day I'm going to sit here and you are going to face up to what you've done. Like some of the girls mm. didn't even come back for the verdict. Probably like, too scared. Too yeah, yeah, exactly. Of course they'd be too, too traumatised. But that was old, my old, way yeah. of dealing with it. Like I was on autopilot, like, <clears throat> you know, I'd let Mark off by doing a plea deal with him. You know, it wasn't it wasn't gonna go down like that for Adam. No. So we'd just sit and have coffee, wouldn't we? And then they'd say, right, it's over for today. Yeah. And then it went on for six weeks and then the the we we went the next day. They did closing speeches. And within an hour the next morning, the verdict was in. We've been yeah. I think it was about two hours took, the verdict. It took a couple of hours to, to find come him in. guilty. He yeah. was just he was just taking the piss, going not guilty basically. They found him guilty within a, an hour or two, do you know what I mean? Yeah, mm. they come in and they said like the verdict's in, but what they've got to do yeah. is they've got to read through every single charge that he's up with. Mm. He's up on so he's up on multiple charges just for me alone. Yeah, and he's I'm up number five. For all, so all the we've all got to sit there and listen to all the verdicts for, you know, every single one of us. I'm like, you know, you're holding your breath and you're crying and, you know, like it's, it's your turn. And all the way through it, I just kept thinking, I'm going to be the one that he gets found not guilty on. Just, I still did not have that faith in myself. Mm -hmm. I just kept thinking, it's going to be me. It's going to be potluck that, you know, he can true. laugh in my face. She thing. was the one who nailed him. And the minute they said yeah, the yeah, first yeah. guilty, nailed him. I felt like someone had punched me with solar plexus and I went to jump up <laughs> and I couldn't breathe. And the police officer just went, sit down, Kira. I went, I can't do this. He went, you can do it. Sit yeah. down. And whatever way I went to sit down, I caught his eye and he caught my eye and he just went, just, there was just nothing there. Mm. That's it. What was his family's reaction to the guilty? Were they crying? Yeah, he was one day, he was they upset, was one day. angry, like angry at us. Yeah. Like, like this, this is bullshit. Like he's not yeah, done like, anything yeah, wrong. He stormed out, like he stormed out and this, slammed like, the door. Yeah, like he was just a joke. Like this is bollocks, not true. You know, he's been set up. That's what their brains, man, was like. Yeah. How did you hold yourself in? <laughs> <laughs> I was good. I just when I seen him, when I seen his baby. That was the only thing what um, I flipped really bad, but I didn't mean it at all. I think it's because it was like she was parading her. Like, mm -hmm. she was parading this baby like this. She was, it was like she was trying to come in like, we're she a was. happy family. That's why it's He's not, not that sort of person. Like, we're, we're good, we come from money. These are just trashy girls. Like, that's what they were saying, like, you're trashy girls. Dr mm. You drink and, you know, walk home at night. And that's the sort of thing. Yeah, he was, was blaming saying. the girls for walking coming. home at night. Yeah, like we're coming in there. So because what you you run your own business or your own car, it gives you a right for your son to go out raping women left, right, and centre. Because you couldn't afford a car, of course. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You know we're below the scum of the scum. So yeah, then sent think six weeks later, then sentencing day. You go to sentencing day, and that's that's a massive day. I think that was one of when I was most nervous and. Really? Yeah, I, w yeah. I was most nervous and we get there and the police are then like, oh, Kira, we need a word with you and Marv. I was like, what? His auntie's been complaining about you. I went, what? She doesn't want you sitting next to her in the courtroom. So we we're gonna, we gonna we've got to separate you. I went, I don't sit next to her in the courtroom. She sits near me, goading mm -hmm. me. So they put her right at the front down near her precious nephew. And I'm like, we sat up in the, the gallery bit. Didn't you say he was getting off on the crime scene photos? Yeah, yeah, he was, yeah. yeah. Um, as people, they might have watched it. I did um, an interview with Neil Samworth, and obviously he is an ex-prison officer. I've worked in Strange Ways, and on his time being in Strange Ways, he worked on the medical wing, you know, for the vulnerable, vulnerable um, prisoners. You know, it's funny that in it where the vulnerable people, but they get treated well. And he come across Adam Downworth on there. Um, and he told me, like, um, 
he used to like walk about the prison like you know like a little mouse like but only speak to the you know the, the female staff yeah like, he was dead creeper and then there was this female Won't staff and she was she was quite her. she was quite scared of him like she obviously she she read his report i and he had um my pictures that the police had took off me you know of me me evidence and you know my statement he was allowed all that because don't forget he's not he's not been he's not guilty yet is he even though he is. And um, Neil said, Neil Samworth said to me that one day there was an altercation, he said something, and he said, like you asked me before, was that the same voice that attacked me? He said, it was just like this whole other person just spun round. He yeah, opened his mild, mouth like a wild animal and just ran with this strength. You wouldn't even look at him and think he had. When mm. the judge sentenced him, the judge said, the most scariest thing about you is anybody that's seen you, even in the middle of the night, would not look at you and think you're scarer and cross over the road. He was mm. small, he was petite, he wasn't like Controls. massive, yeah. but the strength that, you know, he contained in, you know, his body. But yeah, he used to, you, you could tell the next bit what he used to do with the pictures. Yeah, yeah, he just, he's shown it. He shown one of the inmates on the hospital wing the photos, and the guy killed himself within two weeks. He was dead. And it's a terrible thing to know, but you this know, was pictures of his victims. Yeah, pictures yeah. of his victims. Yeah, and the guy had mental health problems, and um, we got told that once he seen them pictures, he never recovered. And he it was all their injuries and stuff. Yeah, yeah, all the and injuries. He droned about them, and he killed himself two weeks later. He was dead. I didn't even know and that's that why the then. that's why the prison officer holds it so dear to him. You know what I mean? He can remember it like it's part of his yeah. story. You know what I mean? Definitely. I think it affected. I think it affected him quite. Yeah. Kira, honestly, what you've been through. I mean, my head just <laughs> so got, brave. my head went west from the minute you talked about. Um, you was a teenager, pregnant, and this monster was stomping on your pregnant belly. Mm. And you lost that baby. And my brain's not calmed down ever since you said that. I just mm. want to, I can't even say what I want to do yeah. to these people. It's um, but what you've been through, I mean, the viewers watching this, their minds must must be as blown as mine right now. And your courage for you to nail that bastard at the end because you yeah. remember these blue eyes and all that. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, bro, right. that is, that's, yeah, evidence. None of the others had a chance to see him. You're so strong. And yeah, all you are just showing. I mean, I mean, you, you told a story in a way. It was just so powerful. Mm. It, it was relentless, wasn't it? It, it was, was from, yeah. from the moment you met him. It was just relentless. We've yeah. sat here for two hours now. Mm. Ch chills going up and down my body and everything. So, amazing. yeah, but both you guys, honestly, you're Thank you're amazing. You. Thanks for having yeah, us on. So yeah, inspirational. Thanks for having us on. Oh. Please. Can't wait for the next one. Yeah. <laughs> please let, yeah, please let us know in the comments what you thought about this. Imagine many of you are as incensed as I am. And the fact that these people, 15 years, you could potentially get out, heart, was it 50%? Or? Yeah, 15 years. Recommendation of 15 years ago, didn't it? Yeah, so we served 10 now. So. He's served 10 already now. So this, 11 years this now. This person's going to be back so on the streets. So in five years, it'll Four or five come back years. up. It's absolutely it's crazy, horrifying. So again, let us know in the comments what you think. Do you think... These predators should be locked up for a very long time, and all these, you know, people with drug addictions and homeless people, and all these people with drugs getting massive sentences. The mm. whole justice system seems to be upside down. So hopefully, you know, by raising this awareness, some changes will eventually be made. Mm. Thanks again, guys. Brilliant. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Some time. Oh, you need one. Oh. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Oh, so long one. Oh, my God. Long one out again. Thank you. Oh, thank you. This podcast is sponsored by Gad Flight Press. We are proud to announce the publication of The Girl Gambler, a young woman's story of her escape from gambling addiction. The story of a young girl's entrapment in gambling addiction, the true advert for problem gambling and how it controlled her every movement every thought, and almost took her life. How the guilt and shame that go hand in hand with addiction stopped her from reaching out for help for eight years as she didn't feel it was okay for a young female to be a problem gambler. How she believed it was a male-dominated problem and how eventually she did find the tools that enabled her to become free of her addiction.
Available worldwide on Amazon, link in the description box below this video. Thank you for supporting our sponsor. Here at Boomer & Jen, we offer a wide range of organic or recycled clothing. We all know our planet is important. We only have this one. So it's vital that we all work together to slow down and reverse the changes to the environment. Whilst we all know that big industry are having a significant effect on pollution, here at Boomer & Jen, we believe that if we all make small changes, we can do our part. Fast fashion causes detrimental effects to the planet. Not only is nearly 20% of global wastewater produced by the fast fashion industry, but there is a considerable amount of fast fashion ending up in landfill. So let's move away from fast fashion items that are only worn once or twice and start wearing extremely comfortable, durable and environmentally friendly clothing and ethical jewellery. Boomer and Jen was founded in a quiet town in Devon in 2018. It has now gone from strength to strength as the world is becoming more aware of the current climate situation, helping our customers to buy sustainable, quality clothing. All of our products are fair trade and registered with the Global Organic Textiles Standard Association. Check us out on organic cotton clothing dot co dot uk